scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So you, the word of God that was allocated to translate him from the realm of foolishness to wisdom. And what is wisdom? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you taught that guy about prosperity and you did not inculcate in him the fear of God. You watch what he would do to his mother or father when the money comes. Hmm. What I'm sharing is powerful. This is not even my message. I, I don't know how I got here, but this is powerful. Sometimes the Lord just distracts us like that to speak to people. It can be a prophetic word for someone that look 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 your journey of ever learning your journey of priding yourself with the vastness of spiritual information will full frustrate you because you will find out that someone does not have one tenth of your knowledge but the little he has was so sequentially arranged his life will show that he's growing properly So the average church member doesn't even carry a Bible again. What's the point? Open to the book of First John. You say, I know this is the record. Look, look at the person who is talking. He daily loads us with benefits. The person who is talking now does not have transport back home. Now, I'm, I'm not talking of initial. I don't ever blame any Christian when it does not have results from the instance. It is okay and it is normal but when you have dwelt around the place of light for a while and your life refuses to bear that witness then it's proof that something is wrong and we can easily diagnose the problem number one will be to check in the area of ignorance if we find out that ignorance is not the problem then number two we we'll check the quality of the information be careful lest what you call light be darkness. So you can call darkness light. Isaiah chapter 9, when you read, I think verse 2 or thereabout, I can't remember. It says, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Until the great light came, they didn't even know that what they were walking in is called darkness. It says that they who were of the valley of the shadow of death, upon them a light has come. We can be galloping in a lot of ignorance justified either by science or culture etc and believe that based on the abundance of this information we have light there is the true light that lighted every man there are other lights that cannot light any man they can light other things but they can't light men animals have a principle that they work with is that true most of the principles that the animals work with are not applicable to men the principle the animals work with is light but that light cannot light any man in their world and in their kingdom and in their sphere of reality remember all power belongs to God so the principle there is not an invention of science it is God's allocation that helps the animal kingdom to also behave well. But because we are the highest of God's creation, many of those truths, they are truths. 
but not applicable to us there are some of those truths that are applicable to us that's why god punishes foolish men by sending them back to the animal kingdom he said go and study my ways as given to the ants you are a lazy man you are a sluggard you are reducing yourself through laziness so i refer you to a lower dimension of my kingdom study the ants that they do not have a king they do not have this kind of organization so when you study you come back every time men refused to learn the laws of their realm they were degraded nebuchadnezzar was turned into what what was he turned into for seven years only his brain was left the brain of a man but every other thing was that of a beast and there was a lesson he refused to learn as a man so when he became a beast he learned that lesson at the end of seven years nebuchadnezzar wrote a sermon you should pay attention to he exalted the name of the lord are we together now they know not neither will they understand 82 and verse 5 of psalms they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said or i have said ye are gods and all of you not some all of you are children of the most high the next verse is a tragedy it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so the tragedy please hear me again sometimes there are times that is just plain ignorance are we together but there are times that it is not ignorance it is the inability to sequentially arrange truth many years ago the lord did something in my life it's a personal dealing so it's not something that you can build a doctrine out of um the lord prohibited me from studying my bible for one week complete one week that's why i said it's a personal dealing yours may be an attack don't mistake in that what that it may be the same thing because god did not tell you yours is laxity that's why i said it's a personalized dealings satan uses words to deceive men ye are clean through the word that i've spoken to you for one week i did not read my bible not because i didn't want to i didn't understand the morale of the dealing until i was done and this was the whole object behind it the, the, the entire focus the entire objective behind it was to bring me to a point where i would realize that i was ever learning but never coming in experience to the knowledge of the truth are we together yes so i was getting you know those days well now we're still passionate about god but there's something about the journey of a believer it's like marathon once they blow the whistle on your mark get set ready sometimes you are even your, your blood is as hot as whatever go and you see someone running as if that is going to stop just at the door so that zeal that fire greek this concordance lexicon you know just study anything once you see a strange word ah pneumatology okay this is i should add this very quickly homiletics homiletics ah. so we were just learning things that were just scattered revelation spiritual but scattered and the rate of change versus the the effort was not commensurate and it was a call for concern and so god was trying to save me trouble i would have been in big trouble now let me tell you why many christians are angry and don't believe that others are using god's power entirely i'll tell you why they are aware of the effort that was put in to arrive to to take one step it's like they did a labor of five years so when they see you soaring in the spirit they say something is wrong something is wrong i started learning 
10 years, 7 years, 5 years ago and you just came and right now in 2 years you are in this level. Not so. One of the greatest blessings that can happen to you is that when you are born again, God plants you under an anointing and plants you under a grace that sustains enough spiritual intelligence, enough balance. Huh? Spiritual intelligence and balance. These two things. Grace and truth. When it is grace alone, you are in trouble. When it is truth alone, you are still in trouble. It is full of grace and truth. So when God plants you under a ministry or under a man of God, many of us, the real tragedy in your life was not the attack that came from your foundation. The real tragedy, now I say that respectfully, was probably the spiritual system you were planted in when you got born again. Because your zeal made your heart open for any information. Unfortunately, many of us received chaffs. It didn't kill you, but you were not healthy either. Because the prodigal son ate the food of, of pigs. He didn't die, but you can't say he was healthy. That's how it is spiritually. Please listen very carefully. Shepherds can destroy people. How did Moses find a wife? Read your Bible. It was shepherds that came to drive the women. Remember, the family where Moses' wife came from. They were shepherds. The women would come to feed their cattle. And those shepherds would come to drive them and fetch water. And Moses came and beat the living daylight out of those people. It is important. There are shepherds that watch their flock by night. But there are shepherds that kill their flocks. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. Please listen to this because tomorrow you will be the one mentoring a lot of people. Spiritual growth is a school. It's a school with an exact curriculum. That God will help you. The sequential revelation of truth matters. It does. I'm telling you this. There are many things we know about God that are wrong. There are many things we don't know about God that should be known. The dimension of breakthrough you desire requires a certain kind of revelation. Light is the currency that we use to purchase spiritual realities. I used to think it's faith, but it's not faith. Faith is simply the credit card that you use. But what really pays for it is light. Hmm. It, from the abundance of these things, then you will know who God is. And you can worship him in spirit and in truth. There are things you can know about God that makes you unbendable, immovable. Nobody comes to sway you toe and fro with every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive the bible says it's important now before i get to my sermon this is this i can't believe that i've still not started preaching look at these people please start look at these people which dimension of your spiritual life has not been arranged accurately there are people who are not even born again because you check the truths that they have salvation is not part of it they never got born again they were just born in a family just because you were not in a beer parlor does not mean you are safe so they started like that they started playing keyboard in church like this guy is playing now from keyboard he became um, assistant music director. Are you seeing that now? From assistant music director, you became music director. From music director, you became deacon. Huh? Yes. From deacon, they opened a branch just when you were graduating. And they call you pastor, whoever you are. 
now the truth is that whether or not you think you have grown according to god's order there is a pattern god is a god of patterns he's not just a god of motion he's a god of patterns how you move and how you grow will determine whether you will become that which is in his heart now this is the interesting thing about god even when you think you have been working with god like we arrogantly say for 15 years the day he reveals himself to you he will rearrange your life back and sometimes when he he rearranges your life by trying your works with fire it's in the bible that means you can see a lot of achievements and the fire of his light will come and all that will be left is your true state that means God will say you men say you are in level 5 you level 15 but really you are just at level 1 now you are at liberty to choose whether you will pay the price unashamedly to start properly with God or allow the ego that you have to just make you continue yes Lord yes Lord you are the king there is none other yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord you are the king there is none other yes lord yes lord so men can call you MOG, men can call you deacon, men can call you this and that. But the truth is that if you are not growing and building according to pattern, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but let me tell you, you are only wasting your time. When God comes, He never continues from where, what you were doing. Look at what happened to Abraham. When he met Abraham at all of the Chaldeans, this was his instruction. Abraham, come out of thy father's house and out of thy kindred. I hope you know at that time, Abraham was not a failure. At least he had some results. He had 200 plus servants. He had cattle. He had a number of things. And said, Abraham, don't think I'm coming to continue from there. I will start with you again. Let's start that journey. This is what brought some of you here. Some of you are already pastors, men of God, leaders. Some of you here were youth pastors before you got admission. You carried youth pastor mentality and just came and God said, no way, come and sit down. And if you are not careful, and please, every pastor here, this, this is an advice. Don't just see someone come because they said he came from so-so-so ministry or so-so-so parish. And in that parish, he was the music director. And you just say, okay, no problem. Come and sit down and play keyboard. And the guy comes with that celebrity mindset. Because in his church, spiritual growth is not necessary. In his church, just attendance and loyalty is what is, and, and sowing of seeds here and there. But now, this requirement requires you to sit down. Many celebrities get born again. I mean, secular celebrities now. They get born again and come to church and then we just transfer their fame of the world and just add anointing on it. Not God. You are joking. Not God. Mm -mm. Not God. Not the God of the heavens. When you come, everybody starts from class one. Even Jesus, when he came, the father didn't even pity Jesus to say, okay, you are Jesus. I mean, this is me. He started right from scratch. At age 12, I imagine what was in the mind of Jesus when he was reading himself. Thou shalt love the Lord your God. And the rabbis were saying, I hope you are learning it. And he was just watching. The force that holds what he's reading. And not even Jesus was promoted like that. He had to wait. At age 12, he was learning what do you think you are to just jump the steps favor does not jump steps so you hear that because our idea of shortcut must be balanced favor is shortcut yes 
but it is not shortcut to alienate you from information that you hear favor is a system that was designed to help you because men do not start life in an ideal way please listen if i was teaching our precious school of ministry students the graph of life yesterday the good old graph of life if you are not part of school of ministry join even if it's just because of that if you don't change after that teaching i don't know what will change you in this life again the graph of life are we together if i get born again 40 years how many of you know that i'm blessed but that's a disadvantage with respect to earthly time we don't have forever on earth now i got born again 40 years and someone got born again at age three who has more advantage than the other and don't say we are all equal you are not equal this guy has time time at age three born again at age four filled with the holy ghost at age five be mentored by a visionary father when that child becomes 12 he is now you of 70 at age 12 now listen let me show you listen listen don't just laugh let me show you the relevance of things like mercy favor these things are not just random things god looked at the way man works on earth and said if i don't add these other things man will never become the fullness of god's grace so here and there he interjects your work with life with these acts of his benevolence to help you this is where things like favor are important if you don't have favor in life you you will succeed the problem is you will only succeed if your life is ideal nobody's life is ideal including jesus they hid jesus because somebody wanted to kill him until herod died and he said okay now you can go there were things he would have been doing within that time Mephibosheth because a midwife I, 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 am I alone in this place this night Mephibosheth was a sincere person the midwife that held him was careless and because of her carelessness that guy fell down and broke his leg now sorry would not solve that problem because there are things he will never be able to do so how does God help this man's destiny by allowing him to live life the way it should be no so god introduces things like mercy thou shall arise and have mercy and looks at him god and he knows he looks at the way man should go and looks at the way man goes this guy was called to be a prophet to the nations this is his destiny are we together now according to god's predeterminate counsel the destiny of this gentleman like jeremiah is to be a prophet to the nations but it so happened that the womb that will give birth to him married an unbeliever now listen to this i hope you know this is not his fault it's just that the woman that should marry him because she didn't have enlightenment or she was deceived or misled now god married to a non-christian you, you you get what i'm saying now this guy according to the blueprint of his life he should have finished his assignment at 70 if he starts his journey at one but because of what he has to fight an extra battle that was not in the original plan is now here and that battle is the battle of grafting him out of this family first and listen to me sometimes this gentleman has no legitimate ground to leave the house until he gets to university so his destiny will have to wait till what what age do you get to university 17. this guy has to wait for 17 years are you getting the point now because according to god's blueprint that is the safest way for him to live if he lives in a way that they, they can kill him and god for the sake of his destiny will not allow him that now while he's waiting for that 17 years his brain is not closed he's learning a lot of things he must undo because you cannot be in my house and not serve my god 
so while he's bowing down and doing all of these things heaven is bleeding because according to the blueprint by age five this guy should already be seeing visions but now the and satan when he peeps there satan will make sure that the clerics isolate this guy and further indoctrinate him to complicate destiny i show you why it's dangerous it's not enough to be saved where you are planted can determine how you grow please parents let me tell you something and even those who have children now don't sit down and say it does not matter where they hear truth it matters sit down and waste your child's time hearing nonsense wasting his time at the end of it you will find out that there is no sequential growth please listen i'm telling you i'm teaching something entirely different this is my note i've not even started but if this is how the holy ghost wants it this night i think it, this is this is a deep and mature teaching i'm i'm correcting the reason why the christian experience of many believers is just is just a buffet of frustrations i agree that an area or two of your life may be trusting be needing the hand of god but when every area fails something is wrong this one is no longer the law of process apostle nothing is working in my life i've been a christian from 2001 i tell you where the problem is i tell you and the problem is not only an attack an attack looks like the obvious reason but i'm telling you now there is no prophet no pastor no apostle that will just pray over the issue of attack alone and then your life changes no you want holistic growth we must do the diagnosis tonight to know what is wrong back to my story this gentleman is loitering somewhere very far from god and far from destiny are we together now he gets to the university after 17 years 17 years has been wasted when he gets there now the devil will try to do all kinds of things for instance the devil can ensure that his first cgpa is 1.2 1 point what who will listen to god under that kind of condition the pressure from life will make him say do you know what let me find a fellowship where in 30 minutes they finished now it doesn't mean please i hope you understand that i'm not being sarcastic to any the fire on this guy's destiny is being quenched because you you call it circumstances but these are intentional orchestrations and then this gentleman one day that's why inviting people to the house of god if you are sure of the quality of what you are receiving then it is evil to not invite people this is not the issue of evangelism this this you being an extension of god's mercy because the person you will be inviting you think you are just inviting you don't know you are acting prophecy imagine that this guy now is in zaria in this situation imagine what heaven will do to you as the person who holds his hand to insist he comes to koinonia you thought you just invited a man but you literally shifted a destiny literally because of one encounter are you with me this night now it's very important some of you are now seeing now do you know that heaven will rejoice when this gentleman comes you have invited five six people but all of them don't have the same destiny this guy ordained to be a prophet to the nations did you really invite one person how many people did you invite he will give you flimsy excuse excuses i've not eaten and the holy ghost will say feed him and you are like holy spirit what is all this one i don't have transport and you bring him now imagine that you bring him for koinonia and then i'm not ready working for others the moment you enter except your feet that something must happen and reduce you back to look like your parents You can choose to believe what i'm saying no problem i don't know who prayed for you before you arrived but let me tell you sincerely if you know that there was no salvation in your past please hear what i'm saying seriously and pay attention to it 
altars are wicked they are like time nothing can fight them they will move slowly unperturbed by your pride until they catch up with you hallelujah i heard of a man of god that bought truck this dangote truck they kept advising him to diversify and that guy carried all his money i don't know how much that truck is but it's so expensive the moment the person bought that truck I, I he was coming along i think kogi or so the road that was how that thing just capsized it burnt in a way burnt everything inside and burnt everything about that man and the guy sat down and was almost killing himself Who taught you what you know spiritually forget about the one koinonia taught you what is it resting upon because some of you this is why you are not experiencing the outstretched arm of god now i don't mean i don't mean i love the body of christ but i have to tell you the truth there are men of god and there are churches that are wonderful but they are not healthy for a foundation for your spiritual growth no the context of what is taught is pungent and dangerous for your spiritual growth salt is good but if you fetch one mudu of rice to cook and you fetch one mudu of salt to cook is that a blessing no. there are truths that are like salt they are sprinkled and is enough by the time you carry that truth the same size of rice and combine everything you will deal and kill somebody there are people the sermons they had is why they never saw the necessity of prayer in their spiritual work are we together they came from a highly intellectual family and you see people just laugh and say demons the only demon you have is a demon in your brain and your mind and the devil says wow this is wonderful for the child who comes from the church the house of an evangelist and a prayer warrior that is a correct sermon but for you who is coming from a foundation where they wrote your name when they gave birth to you while you were a baby your head was inside water and they were speaking nonsense to your destiny and you believe you will just casually say in jesus name i'm born again no sir the same way you don't say casually money come and it comes there are systems and there are principles the same way too if you are not careful you can be born again in a ministry that all they see is demons did you hear what i said everything is demons and then there is serious trouble because you will never have the enlightened mind that will keep you in victory your entire life will be full of warfare and fear because that is the context of the education that you received so when it's time to be responsible and understand the systems of the kingdom you will not so all you will keep doing in your life is to pray what knowledge should bring to you you are trying to get it through prayer are we together now when you should learn when you hear sermons like sermons on destiny help us sermons on excellence the law of honor you just ignore it and say all i know is that there is a witch in this family you will find out that even when the person you have been calling a witch dies you will celebrate and nothing will change because the issue of which was already settled but the remaining issues in fact the weightier matters that required spiritual enlightenment the person who mentored you did not call you to see the necessity it's a blessing to have a good pastor over you it's a blessing to have a man of god that can draw the boundaries that are relevant to your growth and construct you like a building i will give you pastors after my heart this is a mistake we're making in ministry now we just ordain people anyhow the moment someone looks handsome charismatic can dress well you just say come you are you are pastor this and that arrogantly stand on stage and confuse people at the end of it the people don't know what they believe again it's nine o'clock let's pray we can't hear this kind of thing and just round up we are going to pray seriously 
first and foremost hold the hands of someone and blast in tongues first to prepare your spirit find a neighbor and pray seriously prayer is not for prayer warriors prayer is for any man who intends to be changed to be lifted and to become great in life and destiny Pray, pray, pray. my christian experience must be fruitful i must bear fruit i must bear fruit i must bear fruit in my life Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are going to pray this night for your destiny. You are going to call it by name and declare that in this season, my destiny open, 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 open up. He said, Lo, I come. Please pray, please pray. Destiny, in the name of Jesus, be open. Sheketeka parakato pareketa, embrata leka paronda shalakata variata. My assignment, my destiny, open up. In the name of Jesus, no wasting time, no rambling around. Open up in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Outside, are you praying? Make sure you are praying from the depth of your heart. Shabarakata. Emprakato shekete leke teke 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 Emprakato soto pako rakata pariyat Open up Open up Open up In the name of Jesus Open up Open up. Open up. In the name of Jesus. Open up.
Alléluia. Alléluia. Listen. Please listen to me. You are going to pray. And you are going to cry to God. And say, Lord, every, every disarrangement of truth in my life that has been responsible for my stunted growth i pray by the spirit of god rearrange my life rearrange my destiny what i have believed wrongly correct it oh god i am open i'm not a rebel let your emphasis be my emphasis pray More than what a man of God said. Arrange my life sequentially. Arrange my destiny sequentially. Who am I to meet in this season? Who must enter my life in this season? Based on your arrangement. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Please don't think you are you are wasting your time. You are praying seriously. Now I say this with all humility. Listen, please listen. Imagine if till now I was still trying to hear God concerning koinonia. Are you seeing now? Imagine there are people according to the blueprint of your assignment. You are not supposed to be looking for money now. You are supposed to have it already because the next phase of your life is dependent on that supply. There are people right now at according to God's blueprint the level of prophetic you should be operating in it is required for the kind of assignment but because you are still here God cannot move with you hear me hear me there are ladies according to God's blueprint you should be ready for marriage now based on the sequence of your destiny but it's right now you are getting serious with your life hear me hear me there are some of you according to the sequence of destiny it's you and your elder brother that should be standing as pillars but the devil killed your brother from bed that means you are carrying the burden of two people you need your grace plus the grace that will come on you else so when you pray one hour God will say add it to because you were supposed to pray only an hour because there's someone else holding it with you but he's alive and he's drinking around and God's agenda must move forward so you must build stamina to be able to carry it listen listen to me please listen I'm speaking by the spirit don't think I'm just talking anyhow listen to me please listen there are families according to the design of God you are supposed to be three men but the devil made sure no man come to that family it was later on you showed up sometimes as the last born and now you have to stand in a position of three men as one man there are families it's supposed to be you and your father and your pastor but now your father did not serve the lord or your father has died god will not change his purposes his plans can change but his purposes remain eternal listen listen there are families according to god's design you should never even try to say okay i'm looking for two or three jobs because according to that design your father should have been responsible to help you with an inheritance 
but now the devil hijacked that destiny and the way you are right now if you fail there is no more hope for your family because everyone that came to help the devil took them out of the way you know it i like you to pray and say lord i will not fail you and i will not fail destiny is someone praying lord i will not fail you i will not fail destiny if it depends on me then i will not fail if it depends on me if it depends on me to change the course of my family if it depends on me to enthrone jesus over my family if it depends on me i will not fail someone pray pray with the picture of your loved ones in your mind pray with the picture of your children on your mind pray with the picture of your destiny on your mind if it depends on me i will not fail it may take time but i will not fail hallelujah i wish you people knew that song atmosphere shift now ah huh? you may not know it i just i just had that song in my spirit i will not fail if it depends on me i think about my life with all humility and I think about the destinies that would have gone down even if I were born again and I refused to answer the call. Listen, the next prayer point, we are praying. Listen, Spirit of the living God, if I am found anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Bring me back to the place of destiny. Lift your voice and pray. If I found myself anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Please pray, pray, pray. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny geographically. Align me to destiny relationally. Align me to destiny financially. Allow me to align me to destiny spiritually. Align me to destiny, oh God. Pray that prayer and watch your life change. Align me to destiny. Let me stop rambling around. Bring me to the place, the path of destiny. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. It was never my intention, never my intention to be in Zaria. It would have been the last place for me to think of being at this time but you see there's something about destiny there are people when the devil wants to waste their time they will get american visa and travel and roam around america just because you are making some money does not mean you are in destiny look at how god brought some of you here god carried you from different places it's destiny Forget about the story that brought you. Align me to destiny. Let me not find... Listen, let me tell you this. There are people, when the devil wants to destroy their destiny... 
they will receive certain kinds of promotions you would think this promotion is not wrong in itself but they will receive a promotion and become a ceo and that ceo will not allow them do and be certain things life is more than money oh. life is more than fame are we together next prayer point lord where am i supposed to have been in destiny that i am not i pray by the spirit in this season take me there take me there i should not be at this level in ministry financially maritally spiritually pray by your spirit bring acceleration to my life there is no more time to waste the voice of my generation is crying speedy manifestation oh god of all that pertains to my destiny in this season hallelujah hallelujah now listen to me the next prayer point i will have to teach you a little to understand covenants are systems of advantage please listen a covenant is more than an agreement it's a system that provides an advantage in life listen to me carefully you reign in life based on the privilege of the advantage that you have are we together now yes advantage every time you see anything that spells an advantage in the bible you must study it everybody rose based on an advantage joshua stood before jericho helpless like any leader would be except that he was standing on an advantage it was that advantage that brought the captain of the lord's army he said i am here daniel would have died in babylon except for the advantage he was standing on and based on that advantage gabriel came and said i am come to give you understanding and he understood the times that was allocated for the liberation abraham was standing on a covenant and so he saw in a vision that god's people would be in captivity for 400 years please listen to me this thing i'm teaching you is a deep teaching your destiny will remain on the ground until there is a system of advantage i repeat the knowledge of god is not based on covenant your spiritual growth but kingdom advancement and the advancement of your life and destiny is based on systems of advantage are we together and there are many systems of advantage i hope that in the coming weeks just brace up for the teachings that will come in the coming weeks because there are things that we need to learn an advantage There are systems of advantage. Listen to what Haman, when Haman went to his family, his brethren, and Haman told them, he said, look at what Esther did to me. They put their hands on their head. They said, Haman, you are finished. This woman is a Jew. Looked at him and said, whose son are you? Not who trained you. Not what weapons do you have. I need to know what advantage you are carrying to stand before Goliath. When he stood before Goliath, Goliath said, Am I a dog? Am I a dog that you stand before me and come with a sling? Are you trying to catch a goat? And David said, You come to me with your spears and your bows. 
but i come to you listen in a name ah i wish we could deal with this because you see a name in the spirit is a revelation of a dimension of god god's dimensions are stored in his names i came with a name are we together now and foolish goliath instead of him to ask are you a jew he kept quiet what do you think made jericho to close their gate they said who are the guys coming to attack us the moment they said they were jews they close the gate close it quickly we know these guys there is a track record there is a strange god that works with them ah there are men who there are things they are standing on and based on those systems of advantage i tell you they can fail in other things not finances no they can make the most stupid financial decisions yet what they stand upon will bail them out have you seen families like that all their children must be leaders must be leaders it doesn't matter what happens whether it's a village school or whatever the girl must be head girl the boy must be head boy in a class of many people eventually they will be leaders when you say the jf kennedy family what comes to your mind there are families that are a dynasty it's not just business they were passing they were platforms whether with fraternity with satan or fraternity with god but there was a system of advantage i will never forget i've always been a very brilliant person i remember i was in js one this issue changed my life i had always been the best student effortlessly the best in fact i didn't know that people used to read during exams nobody ever asked me to go and read if you were in my class just give up in terms of position you are wasting your time it's not only that i will take first the gap i will give you will make you not to come near me again and something happened when i was in secondary school the first time i was the best student the second term i think i was the best student or so but the third term the guy that took that before the parents moved to living faith listen oh they moved to living faith it didn't reach three months they did anointing service for that boy straight when he came and wrote exams when that now this is not about first or second i'm just using it to explain something when the results came out and i looked at my results i looked at the guy it, it wasn't you know i didn't know what i knew now you can imagine a small boy i said no something is wrong something has to be wrong because my best performance was this point something has to be wrong that guy was his average was just with like five marks i said no there has to be a recalculation something is wrong and then i met him i said in the spirit of sportsmanship congratulations and he laughed he told me that they did anointing service for them in living faith i said what is living faith it was later when i understood i said ah i was standing on my brain he was standing on an altar <laughs> listen sir let me do this come tell us your testimony now everybody stand and listen to this testimony go ahead um i am a pastor i was in mubi before we got transferred to abuja because of the distance and the financial constraint we decided that my wife would not return back to school so during uh, the last uh, her second semester exam she didn't go and then we attended koinonia uh, the miracle service uh, last month and then we the resolve that she should go back to school when she returned to school they uploaded their results lo and behold she had results and all of the results were a i mean b hallelujah praise god now you you i i called him out so that he would talk this is a pastor she didn't do second semester or, what second semester semester 
because of listen because of financial constraint which is justifiable they now came down he relocated and then when all of that happened he now planned because he had been had been in touch so it's not something that we're just talking i've been in touch this is not a license for laziness no it's just showing you that there are possibilities that's why i said the prayer i want you to pray now if i don't teach this you will not understand it woe betides a man who stands alone listen bishop oyedeko listen one man of god in the south south he was about to start ministry and then he went to bishop oyedeko for prayer and advice as you know they were releasing him and bishop oyedeko spoke to him in yoruba i wish i'm a yoruba person he said never fight alone that's my advice for you never fight alone I show you why many people continue to fall victims in life. So, the plan was that they will go back and then let the wife now register. Now that God has helped them, things have started changing. I'm explaining the story for you. They now went and said, okay, let's see how far. As they printed results, second semester result, A and B parallel. That's what came out as the wife's result. This man is a pastor he has a congregation he's a spiritual father to many he will not come and mess up his integrity and he's, this is a father with a wife and children listen it is not to endorse laziness but it's to let you know that this kingdom is a compendium of possibilities limited only by your spiritual understanding god bless you son We are going to round up but let's we are going to pray this prayer systems of advantage abraham was an idol worshiper from a place called or of the chaldeans chaldeans were were idol worshipers they were necromancers when god called him out it still was not enough god met him and said i need to enter a covenant with you if i just call you and i say let's go to the promised land you will still die i have to provide a platform that becomes the basis of this new order are we together many of you do not know that the secret to the future you've heard me say it is in the past before you move forward in life you have to go backwards please hear what i'm saying all these names that we have given this phenomena in life there whether you call it failure at the edge of breakthrough whether you call it spirit husband whether you call it spirit wife whether you call it rise and fall all those are invented names that's to tell you many people are having the same experience that's why they could receive it and understand the teaching that i did the mystery of deliverance part one to four that message has delivered people until we stand before god to see how many people were delivered When truths are taught with imbalance, it can destroy. Listen, there are things that God does for the sake of the fathers. There are things that God does for your own sake. Did you hear what I said? There are some of you now, you are in certain levels of blessings and favor. And in the name of honesty, you have nothing to do with it. Maybe your mother used to cook for pastors. Listen, no. Before you were born, your mother just said, Me, you am not a woman of God. But all I keep doing is if there is any pastor, I will make sure I cook for them. One day, 
she cooked for a man who was not a pastor she cooked for a system and he swore a blessing and said may your children be great now listen that looks like a pronouncement it's more than a pronouncement and now you showed up and when satan is supposed to destroy you between you and the destruction the pronouncement comes in between you my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my mouth the same way noah looked at africa and cursed africa and said a servant of servants shall you be as born again as we are that curse is still in place today now people are following from america and the rest and i don't mean to insult you but you will see the level of spiritual depravity that is in america the decadence right that when you put sex on phone male of or on a form male or female it's not only male or female that is there now male female and then some others yet in the midst of it you expect god to be angry and stand up and say america your glory has been withdrawn <laughs> every time he wants to do that someone's prayer stands every time the coming of jesus was about to be delayed the prayer of anna the prophetess stood in the realm of the spirit maranatha come 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 i told you about my life that my mother prayed a prayer and had an agreement with god she told the lord she said lord my own father was a pastor he died serving you he said please use either my brother her younger brother now or any of my sons to continue let it not be that this spiritual heritage is lost she thought it was just a casual prayer and then i showed up innocently but something was a system of advantage there are some of you today you don't have any past you don't have any bad record it's not because you are a nice person you are one of the most loose and careless person but simply because there was an ordinance upon your life that prevented all sorts of evil from happening to your life because of the destiny attached to you let me tell you this you have to know the systems of advantage that god provided are we together the yoruba people were given a grace upon their minds it's a grace god gave that territory a grace now what i'm teaching you is truth from god's word that the yoruba people as a nation were given many graces among them was the grace for the prophetic the eyes that see not necessarily hearing but the power of sight which was an extension of intellect is a grace please listen to me let me show you mysteries Igbo people were given the grace of courage and creativity it's a grace that was given that you can drop an Igbo territorially is a grace any poor Igbo man you see is a lazy man because they already have an advantage listen the north and that includes the middle belt the grace is the grace of leadership and governance it's a grace this is what the northerners take advantage of they study these things they don't just come out for election they know that we are standing on an advantage these are ordinances my brothers and my sisters in mount zion the side of the north the city of the great king are we together now leadership so many times when god wants you to be a spiritual leader listen carefully no matter where you are in your voyage you must touch the knot no matter who you are listen carefully 
this is where Bishop Oyedeko started from. This, no matter who, he will rout you because you must drink of that grace. How do I explain this thing? Are we together? When you say evil people like money, they don't like money. It is an advantage that has carved out a niche for them. Governance. There are few men of God who now lead the body of Christ who do not have an affiliation with something that brought them to the north. Notice that God, when God wants to announce you in Nigeria, you must touch Lagos. If your feet does not touch Abel Kuta and Lagos, you cannot be global from this country. Whether as a secular artist, I think we'll just end for today. It is those who have the eyes that see, that know. Many of you don't know why God carried you and brought you to Zaria. It's not just because of koinonia. It is because these are the systems of God. He will bring you and you make contact with the possibility that he planted within that territory. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, the, the systems of advantage that you have provided for me, I walk into it. I walk into it. There is a heritage that we have. A territorial heritage. An intellectual heritage. A spiritual heritage. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen. We're rounding up. I want you to get tonight's teaching. Please. I'd like you to give tonight's teaching to anybody you find. And tell him, please. Please. Listen. In fact, you can tell him it's a birthday gift from apostle to you. Take. Listen. This is not the kind of teaching... That you hear tonight and say wow wonderful <clears throat> this is the kind of teaching you will sleep and wake up with there are many things i have said that you did not hear
but i guarantee you that if you understand what i taught this night there is no limit to your life you can take advantage of everything around you every territory has an advantage you can tap into the advantage that comes with it your church has an advantage your soil has an advantage your family has an advantage i know your father was a herbalist and a priest but that is the corrupted destiny of a prophet there is still an advantage that can be seen and can be activated hallelujah this is how we grow in the kingdom we don't just grow by will we don't just grow by luck listen let me tell you this this night i just chose to show you these are the things that work in the lives of extraordinary people it's not just that things are working anyhow no you see all this anointing the power of god breaking out anyhow it's not there are systems of advantage your life must learn it you must know it and you must know how to engage it every jew in israel knows he cannot fail born again or not meet any jew put any jew to be a board member of your company and you watch what starts happening no matter how foolish the decisions are the wealthiest people in america today are jews the greatest brands in the world today they are jews there is a history to the things we see there is a reason why boko haram thrives in the north they go outside the north they will fail north is the seat of governors there is an advantage in the territory they know this by divination the east is always a place associated with wisdom the magi wise men came from the east it's true the wickedness came from the seat of governance herod wanting to kill jesus so it should not surprise you that terrorism springs from the north the seat of governance and strangely enough the place that also looks like the seat of governance is also the place where revival rises hmm. that is the reason why you see the moves of god ministries like koinonia all these things are not they are not guessings they are pieces of a divine puzzle <laughs> are we together many of you are looking at me dumbfounded let's round up by one last prayer father in the name of your son jesus christ reveal to me every advantage that makes for my excelling in life from scripture from the ministry that i am under the grace from christ himself the chiefest of all advantages reveal to me let me know what i stand upon and the possibilities that are associated with that covenant please pray
hallelujah hallelujah you know why the holy spirit decided to move this way to share this these are not things i share in a general meeting like this these are truths that you share when you are talking to leaders i don't know why god decided to allow this thing that's why i said please get it and listen to it you will think you understood what i said no your spirit man only appreciated what i said you will need to settle down because you will hear something from that message that will control your results and open you up to the next season this is how i live my life i never stand anywhere in ignorance of the advantage this world is too wicked you don't guess your advantage on the battlefront it's too risky tomorrow i'm on my way to lagos again i came back from kogi state yesterday there is an advantage i stand upon that gives me security over death my life is a very risky life if you live this kind of life and this kind of schedule and all you say is i know god will protect us one day you will land in trouble i am a giver as a person is both an office a hobby a desire and a responsibility and i know that the way i give is not recommended for an average person i'm telling you this you give that way you will have problems with your wife your husband your children that means there must be an advantage this is more than financial intelligence there must be a system provided that can allow for that dimension of God to continue unhindered. My work schedule. If you do what I do for two weeks, you will have a health challenge. Sincerely, I'm telling you this. I've been out of this town since Saturday. Only returned yesterday. Had to rush, come for school of ministry. And all today, I've been busy doing a lot of things. I'm here now this night as soon as I'm done I'm going to be counseling for over the next maybe two three hours heading back home barely have time to sleep tomorrow I'm heading to Lagos straight into the morning session of a meeting and yet Tuesday is my birthday you live like that something will happen to you if I've not collapsed it's not just because I'm wise there is something you must stand on There must have been something god told you or god told someone you are under or god connected you to there has to be something there are ministries who don't understand this they are anointed but they pay every bill by themselves they never experience help because they have not known how to tap into that advantage there are some of you you have never been helped by anybody you have not lacked but you don't know what it means to be assisted our lives are full of systems of advantage there was something on jesus that made simon of cyrene to be close by there was something in jesus that made joseph of arimathea to be willing to bury him in the virgin tomb look at me please i'm rounding up i know i'm taking your time we're rounding up now any earthly advantage in your life that seems to have gone there is a spiritual replacement for it listen let me comfort you that means whatever your father should be please i'm not getting you emotional if your father here if you've lost your father or you've lost your mother or you've lost any sibling or you've lost a destiny helper i'm bringing you a word of hope that every physical thing that they should do there is a remedy in the spirit if it does not happen to you it is because you do not know this dimension of god that means you are saying i'm an orphan apostle and the only child no father no mother there is something you can tap into the realm of the spirit that can be almost equal aside from the bodily connection 
of a father a mother are we together now there are some of you who lost your physical parents and god carried you and came and planted you in koinonia here so that you can have the opportunity of receiving what is as real as i as fatherhood that means it is your responsibility to go back to god and say lord because of my faith i left my loved ones now i am in zaria all by myself i don't have an earthly father i don't have an earthly mother or i have a father mother some of you here please don't feel bad i am rounding up but i'm speaking by the spirit some of you here are single moms you have your children something happened maybe your husband died or ran away whatever the story is it doesn't matter and humanly speaking you are supposed to be disadvantaged but the bible says for we know they don't know but we know that the kingdom can construct an advantage for you there are systems of advantage apostle i graduated with a third class or i never even had the opportunity to go to school in the first place and the truth is at my age knowledge is not a waste but sincerely at my age the responsibilities around my life may not allow me the privilege of a young person going to go to school again there is a system of advantage that you can tap into that will lift you and keep you where your contemporaries are as though you did not have any disadvantage this is the excellency of working with god So this is a word of hope don't sit down feeling bad just because your husband died or your wife died or your mother died most times we cry for two reasons number one because of the earthly connection oh how he loved him that's what they said when jesus wept at the grave of lazarus but the second reason is because of the space and the vacuum that their absence creates and i'm speaking to you as a man of god by the spirit that there is an advantage in the kingdom that you can tap into you can outsource an advantage to correct the anomaly that the absence of these personalities have caused in your life let's pray father i have spoken to your people by the spirit you have moved in a dimension tonight with us that is most edifying especially for this season we honor you for your wisdom and how you walk in the midst of us we honor you for your speakings thank you for the impartations the deliverances the healings and everything you have done and are still doing my god i pray let this voice not be the voice of a man let let it be the voice of god let it be the voice of prophecy let it be the voice of destiny in the name of jesus i have spoken your counsel according to the wisdom of your spirit i ask that as your people listen to these teachings again and again may they hear what they've not heard now may they see what they've not seen personalize this teaching oh god when they are listening to the tapes and let it minister deeply to the fabric of their destiny let there be results from this teaching tonight and lord i decree and declare that you bless your people the book of revelation says blessed are ye for you hear these things it says blessed is he that hears and reads these things i pray that the ears that will hear this from now and even many many years and decades from now may those ears be blessed may those eyes be blessed in the name of jesus lord i thank you because in the days that come we will credit our the excellency of our work to some of these truths we have learned tonight we give you the praise we honor you and we thank you continue to make this place a place of revelation a place of balance a place of the spirit we, bless you. Bless we give you praise we give you honor right and let's just for in the spirit. mighty jesus we bless you for your presence in this place are you praying lift your voice pray in the spirit Shh.
Abala kata prate segete balada bosh. Lika taprando skela hasha bakota sede baladusia. Mandi bra akush kalabarunde skele bradishia. Lika tabarado sada baliada. Just focus on Jesus tonight. Even as you pray. Pray everywhere, inside, outside, pray online. Bless him in the spirit, speak in other tongues. Aratos kalabrande kabaratos kabradishelibas. He la baruta shabadi adabala. In the la baruta si adabala adabala adabala. He la baratos kabaruta shalabaruti adabala. Si la baru shamananda katabarada katabala adabos. Shete bradi barana bos, katu shalabaru. Samaratu salabarande kapratus kele pratus kelia. Shite balada balada katu skebrande koto shalabradiya. Shibra sabaranda baraku shalakata pradeke de balade bos. Imbra kata barus kabaru shabaru sateta shikata la katu brandege de baladaba zigera tu shabarande rakatu shkalabradia embra kata parata baladaba pray in the spirit shimana sada balakata brandege de balade boko sobrende ke tele kata shalabarada baka prosede baladaba runda sada balakata brandege dias. Kapara kata parende kete pele keto koso dobra shekete parasa de balaka tambra da kata balaka tush lekete prete sabara da balada bakata prete kete pele kato shalabanda rakata la ba 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 imprete kaparuta shabra diga da balada ba haru sababa shana malaka ta prende kete balada bus shite balada balada bakata prende kete balada bus. Embra kata bara kata baru tak sedap berde kete bala da bakarya tak kata friende sedap bakas. Sekete kete 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 sekete kete 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 bara kata bara tak kutus. Separando sata bara kata varianda kata berde kete. Embra kata bara kata berde kete bala kata friende kes kapadas. La kata parus kemada dasanda la kata friende kete bela kata. Make sure you are praying. The spirit is always willing. The spirit is always willing. Shana balada balada bakush. Helanda reka sabarada balada balada ba. Shela baraka da balada 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 bakush. Shela barada balada balaka tush. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are still going to pray. And I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. Father, everything that will cover my hearing and my seeing tonight, I tear it off my life. Lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice. Pray seriously. Pray seriously. every flesh that will cover my eyes and cover my ears tonight i reject it are you praying i'm in a season where i must rise in the spirit i must rise in destiny i put pressure on myself for the sake of my destiny is someone praying for the sake of your destiny is someone praying for the sake of your generation 
Zika pakato sabranda kaparus kabariata. Embra kata parakato shadeka telekate prakata lakata. Give yourself wholly to them. Give yourself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear unto all. That thy profiting may appear. Shalamalakata prandas katabalikata. Endere katalika protosubatalakata. I put myself under pressure tonight for the sake of my destiny, for the sake of superior levels in the spirit. Pray. Shikatabalakata. Ears you must open. You must hear. Eyes you must see. In the name of Jesus Christ. Keep praying, don't stop. Don't look around. Pray, focus on Jesus and pray. Kabarus kamalakata prashkede belekata. Embrakata takata bakata rekete kete. Rekete kalata parusa sianakata. Mam brekete katola kapris kalibarando shalakatos. Tonight my eyes see and my ears hear. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Change my life, breathe on me. Lift my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Change my life, breathe on me. Heal my life, breathe on me. Restore my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Lift my life, breathe on me. Bless my life, breathe on me. Change my life, breathe on me. Oh, 
Halabarande Salakata Brahaska de Beleko. In the Lekate Bransa Sasiata Kata Bradaka de Baladakatu. Pray as part of the meeting. Halabarakata Bradaka de Gadebakata. Shalabarakatu. Change my life. Change my life. Change my life. Let this not be another meeting. Change my life, oh God. Change my life. Change my life. Change my life. Pray for your life, not your finances, not your ministry, not your business. Focus on your life. Change my life. Change my life. Tonight is about me, it's about my life. Leave your challenges. If you are not there, your challenges will not be there. Pray for yourself. This is about my life. Habaru samananda kalakatos. Emprakata parakato kata bekata regata. Shekete ne parus kabariata. Emprakata parakata prakata lekata pratich. Shekete le kotos sabraniata balaya. Change my life. Change my life. Shalabarakata paratus. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me, please. Please listen. Many times we focus on the things we want changed, not knowing that the troubles came because you were there no dead man has trouble no dead man needs finances no dead man needs breakthrough no dead man needs speed delay comes because you are there speed is needed because you are there everything is required because you are there we focus on everything we want change and forget about ourselves one of the primary assignments of prayer listen is not to petition God to meet needs. It's not even an instrument of warfare to ward off the power of darkness. It's not just a spiritual system of legislature. One of the major assignments of prayer, and this is where many believers continue to miss it, prayer was originally designed to change you. Let me show you a scripture. Luke chapter, keep standing. Luke chapter 9. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, please. Be sensitive tonight. Luke chapter 9. From verse 29. Everybody read. One, two, read. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white glistening. He prayed and nothing around him changed. It was him that changed. When he prayed, his countenance changed. His raiment changed. You can change yourself in prayer. Did you hear what I said? You can change like a, how many of you have seen a snake molting? It's a system by which they grow, they expand. They come out of their former self into a new self. So when you see that snake, the, 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 the former self, the, the shell of it that is left, is the former one. You can pray yourself into a newer version of yourself. You can pray yourself into a wiser version of yourself. You can, let me tell you this, prayer is not the only key, but whenever prayer is not the key, it becomes the hand that holds the key. If prayer is not the key, then it is the hand that holds the key to the door. Everything plus prayer increases you. Knowledge plus prayer increases you. Grace plus prayer increases you. Are we together? And as he prayed, he didn't say his situation changed. No. He didn't say as he prayed, those, there were times that he prayed 
and people from a distance were blessed but this time around as he prayed he was the one changing we're going to still pray a few minutes this prayer is not for my father this prayer is not for my bank account this prayer is not oh god take darkness out of my life this prayer is change me this is not the best fashion of me this is not the best it's, it's like an it's like an incubation room bring something out of my prayer life oh god that is not what went in is someone praying lift your voice pray you are praying to be changed you are not praying for things to change you are praying to be changed Fix your eyes on Jesus and pray. They looked unto him and their faces were lighted. do not say i'm tired do not say i'm weak that's a lie of the devil do not say i can't pray you pray for your destiny by praying for yourself you change things by changing take this weak fashion of myself to a strong fashion oh god take this weak fashion of myself this weak fashion of a man of god this fit fashion of a woman this weak fashion of an entrepreneur this weak fashion of a career person let it be replaced by a strong one There is power in prayer. Pray yourself to strength. Pray your way to authority. Pray your way to power in the spirit. Pray your way to strength. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. Pray your way to faith. That thy profiting may appear unto all that thy profiting may appear unto all that thy profiting may appear unto all your profiting will never 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 appear unto all by default you must pray your way to results pray your way to real power pray your way to strength pray your way to real anointing pray out weakness from your life pray out fear from your life
your way out of lukewarmness. Pray your way out of doubt and unbelief. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Greatness is what you attract to your life by reason of what you are becoming. More than by reason of what you have, your results 
are a reflection of the transitions happening in your life or otherwise it is cheaper to change yourself than to change things because when you change things must change everything in your life is a statement to your destiny this is where you are in the spirit this is where you are in knowledge this is where you are in destiny instead of shifting things one by one shift yourself and everything will rise to follow you you truly change things by changing you don't change things it's harder to change things one by one everything you draw to your life is a reflection of what version of you when you change your results change when you change even the operation of the spirit over your life changes he does not relate with everybody the same way at every dimension no hallelujah it's important we pray the biblical way to deal with weakness is to pray you pray out a weak version of yourself if you fail in the day of battle he say your strength is small hallelujah praise the lord please be seated god bless you be seated and be sensitive please play the strings for me mighty god give you praise Good evening, everybody. It's my goal and my prayer and my desire that every service becomes an experience for someone's life, an experience for someone's destiny. We've been doing this for many years, but we will never take for granted the opportunity that God gives for our growth and our transition every service is prepared intentionally not only to bless not just to honor the continuity of a ministry's program but it's an opportunity for the holy spirit to come once again and to change our lives and among the things we must rebuke is familiarity you must rebuke familiarity i know how god works I know how God moves. I know somebody is about to shout. I know somebody will roll as usual. This is what you expect in Koinonia. That familiarity will turn you from a partaker to a spectator. You can be in a place, be a witness, a spectator, and not a partaker. It takes more than just looking around to be a partaker. It takes a heart connection an awareness that one moment in god's presence effectively maximized can turn a man's life around people say one word from god can change a man no one word from god does not change a man one word from god received understood and engaged is what will change a man one word from God to change a man is deception the devil has never been afraid of the word of God when the sower sowed it was Satan himself that came and carried the seed one word received with meekness the Bible says the engrafted word praise the Lord I came tonight with a very serious burden um, and many times when the Lord wants you to teach teachings that are very very seasonal and very called for especially as the times demand he will bring them not as sermons he will bring them as burdens it will be a strong burden upon your spirit that will refuse to leave praise the Lord and um, I've been focusing a lot 
especially about what i just talked about the power of changing things by changing the power of growing to superior realms of results by being the one to grow i think that sometimes we pay so much attention on the things around us we desire changed that we forget that those things are there because of us that means that if i refuse to transit in life no matter what i try to move it will come down back to my level are we together now there are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray for yourself let me repeat there are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray on and for yourself that means if you become the project of the growth there are many things you may not need to pray for again it's true in praying for yourself you will find out that you are praying for many other things your prayer life and indeed your destiny will be hard if you focus on any other thing outside yourself pay attention to yourself the development your transition and then you will find out that in doing so you are automatically influencing every result you desire let me repeat what i said earlier on while we're praying that greatness and success is what you attract to yourself not what you pursue what you attract to yourself by reason of who you are becoming if i'm still the person yesterday today then i do not deserve to get any result different from that which i had yesterday the results you seek cannot come to this version of you they are to come but not this version of you the anointing that you seek cannot come upon this version of you the prosperity you seek cannot enter into the pocket of this version of you so many times the power of restraint is not always demonic it is god waiting for the version of you that matches that result please listen and learn and grow this is spiritual intelligence not every restraint is an attack from satan not every restraint is proof that there is something demonic many times it can be god waiting for the version of you that is fit it is not because god cannot take the members from hundred to ten thousand it is not because god cannot take your finances from 500 to 10 million it is not because god cannot take your grace from this level to that level but it cannot come on this version of you the bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin they are all called wine skins the difference is old and new you are still called a human being but the difference is the old version and the new version you are still called a man of god but the man of god before and the new man of god ah jesus said why seekest ye the dead among the living there was a version of me that lied lifeless you saw that version on the ground but it's no longer in the grave a version of me has arisen in the glory of the father not the one that walked the earth now without blood a version of me that lives by another life i learned this in my life and as a person i stopped wasting my time to change things it is hard to change things do you know how many things in your life you have to change if you pursue them one by one think how hard it is to look for good friends think how hard it is to look for quality connections and relationships think how hard it is to look for information every level already has the systems and the provisions waiting the cheapest way listen it is harder for me to try to reach to something higher than me to bring it down to my level it is wiser to grow to that level where it no longer becomes difficult remember if you watch a child growing up like one of these are little ones they try to reach for something and you see the difficulty they can fall many times 
it is cheaper. Sometimes they can try and stand upon something that can throw them and then pick what they want. But an adult who has grown just comes and he can look from that height and without pressure pick. The things that are hard today are not hard. It is your level that defines them so. If you grow, you will find out that they are not so. The finances that looks like a monster of a realm. Lord, when will I go out of this? It's only the old version of you is looking at the destiny that only the new version of you can enter. So it looks hard. Spiritually, Lord, is it possible that I can step into this? How will I start seeing visions? What does it look like to see a vision? Will I be in myself? Will I fall down? Is it that I'm dying? Those are unnecessary questions. Just grow. When you grow and enter those realms by experience, you will have those answers. There are many things about your biological life you did not need to ask. It's a burden to ask every question. What happens to me when I'm a teenager? What happens when I'm 13? Give me a detailed information of what will happen when I'm 14 years. It's unnecessary. Just grow. As you grow many times, you will find out that you didn't even consciously pay attention to those transitions. Let me ask you a question. Do you know where your clothes of 10 years were? Do you know where they are now? Can you remember giving them out? No. Can you remember burning them up? No. Can you remember packing them to keep somewhere? No. They left for these ones to come. It's a mystery you don't understand. Remember where your first phone is? Remember you didn't throw it. Remember you didn't sell it. Remember you didn't sew it. But where is it? Many times we don't know the things around us are living things too. They are governed by laws. They live quietly and we do not know. May the Lord give us understanding. That the things that we call dead are not dead. They can hear and they can see. They are more obedient to the systems of God than us. Are we together? I never had to tell anybody, stop giving me this kind of honorarium. Stop tearing 2A and rolling 500 naira inside and chucking it in my pocket as a bribe. That would be stupid and arrogant. The key is to grow. When you grow, a law prohibits individuals from approaching you that way. Are we together? So many times when you look at the things around you and you don't like them, they were not designed to live. They were designed to be the reality of anybody in that realm. If you don't like them, move to the realm where there are realities that match your desire. Please listen to me. This will give us intelligence. There are many prayers we pray that are, it's just the mercy of God that answers them. They are not wise prayers. They are prayers that are a reflection of spiritual ignorance. Many times the prayer is not take this away from me. Many times the prayer is take me out of this realm. The realities are fixed. They are there. An heir, as long as he's a child, he says, differeth not from a slave, though he be lord of all. He says, but he's under tutors and governors. That means that when you find out there are tutors and governors around, the issue is not to drive them away. The issue is to grow out of childhood and you may not need them again. Praise the Lord. Yes. Another analogy, and then I'll begin to teach on what I have tonight. There are many primary schools, I believe they still do it, where the junior students in that primary school wear short trousers. Is that correct? And then when they get to a particular level, they start to wear long trousers. Now imagine someone in, say, primary two, goes to the teacher and say, look, I'm tall. It's something that came genetically. And because of that, it may not look good on me to wear a short trouser. The rules will not change because of you. But when you change, you change the rules. 
you don't change the rules by changing the rules you change the rules by leaving the realm where those rules apply all rules don't apply the same at every level it is true are we together so we seek to transit by the spirit to realms where certain things no longer hold listen to me look up please look up you're writing but look up if you do not pay attention to what i'm saying this is what will happen to you everybody speaks from the reality that his transition has captured so many times when you hear people speak you will interpret their speakings from your realm and based on your realm it looks untrue with all humility if in 24 hours nobody favors me is proof something is wrong at this level you see that yes the level god has brought me makes it is either an attack or something about my life 24 hours cannot happen without someone favoring me this is the reality at this level are we together now yes once upon a time if i'm not favored in a year i'll have to be patient for one year to know whether it's an attack or not at the end of that year i say no this year it, it was not like that and then you pray and then you rise to a realm where it becomes a month you rise to a realm where it becomes a week if nobody calls my phone in 24 hours seeking for help something is wrong i will go for a retreat 24 hours i wake up every day without fail with text messages of people needing the grace of god upon my life once upon a time i think something happened to my phone and there was no network i got up in the morning and flipped my phone and it was empty i said this is something is wrong something has to be wrong in five hours my phone did not ring nobody sent a text something is wrong i off the phone and put it back and there the text i said this is it because that result did not look like my realm now listen please listen to what i'm teaching you there are levels where if you pray for one hour you must punish yourself hello this is not religion you truly must punish yourself because the demand on your life the daily servicing of your altar one hour is too small if you don't meet that target you must punish yourself by an extended prayer time someday why because before you finish thanking god for what he has done the time should have gone what god has done is to before you start listening and say lord let me name my blessings thank you because the other day they didn't kill my member somewhere thank you oh god because the wicked did not get a reason to laugh one hour is already covered there are people who don't have much to say thank you for thank you lord because i'm alive thank you because even though my father is alive lord here are my needs but there are things god has done to you in some realms it is wicked to use 10 minutes to say thank you now the time someone is interceding is your thanksgiving time you use that one hour to roll on the ground and say thank you sometimes you use 15 minutes to just keep quiet and let your tears say thank you before you start talking that's why i'm telling you praying for one hour in certain realms is not talking in tongues for one hour there are activities in some realms that is only intercession and warfare what and what intercession and warfare because of the seriousness of where you are but there are realms that god has given you some level of victory intercession will be after a prolonged period of cry and thanksgiving so two people go to pray come show two people go to pray they represent different realms one person enters and say father i give you thanks you are the lion of the tribe of judah this is the day or the night whatever time of the day that the lord has made i rejoice i give thanks Shut up, and straight you go into lord these are my petitions help me oh this is plenty the list is increasing lord help me at a point you start praying you start lamenting you are right at that realm you will find out that the person you went to pray with you will think he cannot pray this is what you'll be doing 
Thank you, Jesus. Father, I glorify you. He's praying, oh. You are merciful. You are merciful. You are merciful. And a song is playing. Lord, you are merciful. And you are there praying and getting angry. I say, hey, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. You are not at the same realm. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Listen. That person is taking out time. Later on, you are exhausted. You are thirsty. You are tired. You don't even know. You have been praying and miss all around. He knows you are praying and miss. He's not correcting you because there is a provision of God's mercy that whoever is at that realm, God should ignore his mistakes and answer him. So you find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense at that realm and you receive supernatural answers. They are not a proof that you are correct. The person standing here already knows. You didn't enter his gates with thanksgiving. You didn't even get to his court. You are shouting around the gate. But God came out and helped you. That is not how he helps men. He just came to help you. Now watch this. This is, if you understand, you will now get what I'm telling you that your prayer life imagine that two of you come you you truly with without without a sense of pride two of you cannot be prayer partners it's not like you can pray together but you can't be prayer partners you can only be prayer partners corporately and to round up maybe belong to the same group because this guy is already he brings out his piece of paper and there's nothing to bring out you tell him all right pray and you lie down flat only to stand up after two hours you are not sleeping no it's part of the prayer time and the guy says God, bros i'm tired i'll finish i need to go i'll come back later and he says, okay god bless you there are certain realms where you cannot pray with people there are things god will do and tell you that requires you alone with him so when people are there he will relate with you in a way and manner that is general and you have to remain behind because you know you and god have not talked yet people are there and you are praying generally oh lord thank you for everything okay may god bless you sir we are going to sleep and you tell them go and then immediately you go the atmosphere changes the holy spirit now comes as one adorned for that realm there are ways he cannot relate the the weirdness of his operation at that realm cannot be understood by people because sometimes as soon as he comes there you will do things that don't make sense you will walk alone and fall down and that's it you are in a vision and for the next 30 minutes you are there do you think that person will leave you alone he will wake you and shift you till your spirit cannot return back to your body again so he will allow them go you don't covet a man's prayer dimension by saying let that dimension come and meet me no you don't have enough testimonies to pray that kind of prayer you've not gone through enough pain to know what a man will be doing for three hours everything in your life is paid for by everybody you don't know what it means to be attacked what commission have you been given what assignment what what is the devil going to attack you for it's just general attacks here and there just to bring down your spiritual life nothing serious so you can stroll around for 10 minutes and go but there are certain burdens that when at when they're on your head the time it takes me to pray for one department alone in koinonia will surprise you there are, when you know see listen the weight on your head determines how you walk if you are carrying a cup on your head you can even leave it and walk around if you are carrying a headpan, you can walk around. If you are carrying a destiny, the walk is so slippery, God must lead you on how to walk. This is what people do not understand. So this thing people generally call prayer is many things at many realms. That's why you see me encourage people. I... As I began to grow in the things of God, I found out that I cannot pray comfortably in the daytime. My life at this level will not allow me to maximize prayer. The distraction that will come from my phone ringing, I don't off my phone. Whether I'm on pulpit or my phone is, if my phone is off, I'm either taking a flight or maybe something is done. 
you see that i charge my phone an average of twice every day i have to because of you do you know living is not general the concept of living is dimensional listen to me that means when you are tired of certain things certain experiences around you someone else is coming into that dimension so you are not going to say lord take away those things your job is to rise to the next dimension are we together now yes once upon a time i remember those days if there were 30 people and i was going to minister to them i would have to lay hands on everybody one by one it was very exhausting and i said god there has to be a better way once upon a time if god is talking to me and i see in the spirit that god wants to touch you i will have to walk to you to touch you for that word to come to pass that was it was not what god could do it was what my renewal and my alignment at that level could allow him to do and i knew that if i continue that way what if i have 30 minutes to preach and god wants to touch 500 people i follow them one by one touch somebody in overflow three come back touch this how do you touch the people online and then i said god there has to be a way and he said of course there is a way for i am a man under authority and i say to one go and he goeth that your words can become you you don't have to move your presence can be poured into your words you can send it on errand backed up by the anointing of the spirit and it will produce the same effect and i said okay god what does it take let's go if you are interested now when you rise to that realm you will see it and then sometimes a new believer will sit down and be wondering wow how does this thing happen if the holy spirit shows me that he wants to touch someone in overflow three now you see all i need to do is not just to speak it or say it you see that you agree with god it looks simple until you are taught what really happens you come and collect the mic and talk i will tell you when god wants to touch somebody your job is to just say it and you will be very surprised to see as if god doesn't love you so most of this prayer lord why did you disgrace me i went to this meeting expecting the result of a realm you went to the meeting with the expectation of a realm you have not entered because you saw somebody and you said no abba this must happen are we together there are people who carry graces as soon as they sit down and begin to talk something about the realm and the dimension of god that they walk in will force you to pay attention they don't have to say keep quiet no there are realms where they say oh yeah keep quiet now praise god everybody listen but there are realms where there are other provisions some spiritual arsenals have been provided that compel men to hear you so you can see two men of god operating everybody's bringing his possibilities are we together yes to believe that everybody is just generically carrying eternal life carrying the holy spirit you are right but you are wrong people come with their realms and the possibilities that come with those realms listen to me and that means that if and when you are tired of what you are seeing and you do not like it the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord there is a hill there is a level where you can rise to elijah was sitting uphill and he was able to see those who were coming and he called down fire on them he was sitting at an altitude physically but that can also be symbolic of an altitude in the spirit papa Ia deboe can just come and stand on this pulpit and just say thank you and speak and say let me bless you i declare that before the end of this week you will be favored 
now he's speaking from a realm you will say amen it may not sound charismatic it may not sound apostolic nobody falls nobody rises but the nature of the spiritual provision that follows his grace will insist that that word comes to pass not because you believe it for the sake of the position he represents to the body so you see him not say well do you have there are realms where you say have faith press i'm sensing unbelief you are stopping this thing from happening truly there are dimensions where god does a thing not just for his name's sake he does it to honor the covenant he has with the vessels it's true that's why you can find somebody will come under a ministry and way before he starts learning how to tithe, he will start receiving results of a tighter breakthrough open doors and when you meet him and say you are so successful teach me about success it will be the worst 30 minutes of your life he will vent ignorance from a to z and say why are you succeeding he said, well i don't know and truly he's right he doesn't know and if he makes a mistake to go out of that covering in one week everything will dry because that thing will come his results will come back to look like his true realm do you believe what i'm sharing with you yes the animals did not want to be saved they didn't know how to be saved but they came under the covering of noah's ark it was built with food inside to sustain them the animals would come out after the flood like heroes but where they left alone they would die there are dimensions in the spirit and there are realities that means that if i want you to move to another dimension of results then i must be able to guide you on the principles that will transit you from where you are to where you need to be there are destinies that no matter how you pray and fast at that level there are certain levels of the blessings of the lord that may never be made manifest your capacity at that level will not allow god bless you there is no need for that level of blessing at that level are we together there are things you must be taught that means every time come look up please that means every time the word of god is coming to you it's not only edifying you listen very carefully it's not only informing you it's transiting you that means a possibility exists that you came here koinonia at a realm and by the time we're sharing the grace you think because you wore the same clothes you are the same person going out immediately you step out you will find out that the reality that followed you here is not the reality that went out with you many of you especially men of god come here and you just sit for one meeting and at the end of it sometimes you don't even get to see me and you are prayed for and that's it all you need to do is go back to your church or your fellowship and the first surprise is when you open your bible ah, ah, what is this again then you stand to pray and it will surprise you let me tell you another thing that will surprise you your worship team members that didn't follow you will start singing and you will think this is koinonia worship team you took something more than you back to your meeting are you seeing that remember you didn't call them to tell them look this is where i went to this is the grace i carried you went quietly but the nature of that grace is like a software it starts reprogramming everything around you to reflect the level you have now entered all of a sudden you find out that if you are someone who were not excellent for instance and you contacted that grace for excellence you come back with it you don't have to start teaching first you will find out that in a span of two months exceptionally excellent people will start coming to your platforms they were called there is a grace that calls them they don't hear you because you are not yet at the level where they hear there are ministries that no matter what branch you open even if they open the branch close to a mosque they must have excellent people it's not like they bring people from the headquarters the grace 
was designed to ransack the city and look for those who must make the anointing that is upon that level to walk to come there are cities where people hardly get land for church and for certain things but there are ministries that enter with some graces as soon as they enter there must be vacancy suddenly somebody gets visa and is going abroad and he leaves his house and they demolish that house and it becomes a church the pressure that that grace puts on a territory until there are results please listen to what i'm telling you that means there is a grace you can carry that when you stand somewhere it becomes impossible for people to ignore you it's not you you have risen to a level that grace will begin to compel it will orchestrate a scenario that must bring you out no matter where you hide something must happen to the point that if god if it's a grace at that level god has mandated that at that level any time you go you must be seen and his grace must be acknowledged so you are humble and because you are in that place god that anointing can make somebody who has no business coming there who knows you to come there so that he can announce you and then leave the grace on your life there are dimensions of favor that you can enter into huh that even if it's on a saturday night you speak over people they must be blessed even if it's sunday during service it's true it's true there are graces please listen to me there are dimensions you get to in the spirit that when you make certain spiritual utterances and say god said even if it's not god that said it because of the realm you occupy he will honor what you have said and rebuke you when you go back are we together that means it is possible for a man of god a prophet to come and see learn this a prophet can come and see that Shehu is supposed to be blessed October. That's what the revelation gave and is accurate. But I can come with a dimension. Listen carefully. Until a higher dimension comes, the highest grace that spoke is what works. But when a higher grace comes, I can make that October become tomorrow. I'm not a prophet. I came with a realm of intimacy and a covenant that i have with god and i can look at him and say my friend um something fell down and you gave me look at this i bless you by tomorrow and god will take what it doesn't mean the prophet lied it is the implication of the realm that was introduced <laughs> believers hear this and grow so if you don't understand you may go back and say fake prophet you prophesied nonsense no the prophet himself even that office is in levels a prophet in this realm is not greater than a christian in this realm the realm which is a reflection of his work with god must bow listen the office that that man has as powerful as it is there is a realm of intimacy you can have with god that equals that office you are not a prophet but the level of dealing you have gotten with your result is the same result a prophet will get so when you stand side by side by with a prophet they will call two of you prophets you are not a prophet you have only transited to a realm where there is no difference between you and the result of a prophet or an apostle These are deep mysteries in the kingdom that many people do not understand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's powerful. That means if you truly want to be a blessing, more than office, more than titles, seek to be transitioned to a deep 
dimension of work with the holy spirit where there are results you will command that it looks like you are getting results from every office a point will come your members will not even know who you are he said this guy is a prophet but are you really a prophet this guy is an evangelist but you are prophesying more than a prophet and you say you're an evangelist you say, god told me i'm an evangelist you started as an evangelist your intimacy took you to the realm where only prophets should get to and took you to a realm higher than that dimension that means it is possible for a man of god you offend to curse you in anger and truly it will happen but a man of god will come who is not a prophet not an apostle not anything but in a dimension of grace he has been given the power he will nullify that thing and say it is true based on this course you should die tomorrow but i hold your hands god look at him for my sake let it go it's true i'm looking for the best way i will help you understand this thing tonight these are the dimensions that are at work in us that certain things can happen to people because certain people are there are we together yes all of these things you see are provisions that god put in place to ensure that the body continues to grow and that we continue to receive results you can't believe that i've not even touched my message tonight i just came with a hunger and a burden let's see what i can touch i took the a part of what i want to share last week responding to the situation that we have that is widespread now people getting frustrated as to whether the word of god produces results or not many of you have seen the rate of suicide and the rate of not armed robbery not boko haram these are people killing themselves now a man leaves his family and then they are called that he died left a note i'm tired of life and that's it and young people also killing themselves and those who are alive it's almost as if they are dead already depression teenagers having depression young people having high blood pressure all kinds of health related issues there is an answer i attempted to answer that question last week was it or the week before last that the reason the first reason that we looked at was because of the nature and the kind of mentorship and teaching are we together i stated that people have been taught that the value of their life is in the abundance of the physical things they get and so by the time you find out that you are unable to get a car and a house and a child and a husband and a wife and certain things at certain levels self-inflicted frustration begins to come listen carefully and as a result people become depressed you hear people saying as old as i am I, I don't have a child or i don't have a wife or i don't have a husband or i don't have my own house can you imagine at this age i'm still renting can you imagine this and that can you imagine at this age i have only three girls no boy you know and all of these kinds of things and i told us that it is because first the kinds of teachings please listen carefully the kinds of teachings that we have taught people we have taught people that spirituality and in many circles sadly that spirituality is only measured in the acquisition of physical things are we together so by the time i have by the time i have certain things for a prolonged period of time maybe a house a car and all of that i am perceived to not be growing spiritually are we together yes why do you still have this car after 10 years why are you still living here after 20 years so that pressure to do things to prove that the word is working when our 
our expectations continually become disappointed then we are plunged into that state of depression are we together but then tonight's teaching also is an attempt to bring balance to it to help us understand it is important for us to get results and i want to talk um maybe just a few minutes our time is already spent on the fact that i believe that many people are unable to rise to the realms please listen the realms that will allow their lives reflect the faithfulness of god among many things because we have not learned thank you we have not learned that success is not something you pursue please say after me you do not pursue success you do not pursue greatness there is nobody who tries to pursue success or pursue greatness whether spiritually financially and otherwise that will ever have it it is not something you pursue please listen to me it is something that you draw it is attracted to your life on the strength of who you become and listen to me there are certain traits every blessed man every anointed man every influential man everyone that has been trusted with grace and influence will tell you listen there are a set of traits that individuals must possess you call it character you call it whatever it is there are belief systems say belief systems there are there are mindset conditionings that you must be able to have that will allow you to transit like i said earlier to the realms where these things effortlessly let me tell you this every time you struggle unnecessarily to get something stop immediately did you hear what i said every time you are struggling unnecessarily to get a thing stop immediately it may be proof that you have not acquired the spiritual the psychological and the spiritual maybe sometimes the intellectual stamina to bring that thing this is rainy season no farmer would go to the farm and have to labor so much to till the ground why because part of the provision of the rainy season is a system that softens the soil are we together now but if you try to till the ground by november december especially at this part of the country you're going to have a hard time so there are certain things we are trying to get is proof that although you are trying to reach out and it's running away from you is telling you something by running that you are not yet qualified for me so instead of running unnecessarily cut away and stay back and build the belief systems build the track record in the spirit that makes for that thing and i tell you whatever it is that left you will come to you and stick to you and refuse to go it is true for finances it is true for ministry it is true for leadership it is true for the anointing it is true for revelation it is true for anything i want to walk you through a few belief systems tonight maybe just two three and we'll pray since our time is gone that i believe is pivotal to our entering these new seasons that the lord has spoken to us about there are many of us who can sense in the spirit that i am at the edge i am i've exhausted my current level are we together now that financially spiritually and otherwise but let me limit it to our uh, the things that pertain unto life the things that matter to our life our upkeep our welfare and so on and so forth because that is what is causing the depression i don't think anyone will go and kill himself just because he doesn't know god he would rather fast he would rather pray he would rather buy books but when you are unable to pay the fees of your children, when you are unable to do well, when you are unable to take care of your parents and do all of that, the accumulated frustration can push you to a point. Do you know that in all fairness, I think in the last one or two weeks, I've gotten at least one text every day. People just calling and saying, Apostle, please, you have to talk to me. 
otherwise i've been sensing i've been hearing a voice say i should kill myself i'm good for nothing repeatedly from different regions and then i knew that this this is terrible hearing voices getting frustrated feeling my life cannot you know my life would not make sense the the latest of the suicide issues i got to hear was a man a father who had a quarrel with his wife this is a true story some of you may have heard it a man who picked a quarrel with his wife and she took out time and blasted him and told him how irresponsible how shameless how disappointed she was in him how sad she felt that she got married to him and told him is it that his children were also disappointed and the last they said was that the man went out he just left and that was it they thought he was kidnapped they thought he was killed they didn't see him for a few days and they thought he was just you know men and their anger until police traced down and they found out that the man had died and they traced that the death was suicide now if you trace i'm not talking against church but if you trace that man will have to be associated with a group a church a fellowship or some kind of spiritual platform that means it is irresponsible for any man of god any spiritual leader to not at least respond to these things listen sociologically speaking men of god are also mind control systems men of god are also agents of transformation and much more than helping people to build their spiritual convictions we must pay attention to make sure that when there is an there is a psychological epidemic within a territory it is wise for every responsible man of god who has a sizable influence over people to contribute in making the people stay in a position that will not allow satan to bring all of those kinds of predicaments are we together say i need results in my life it is true that results are not the basis of our confidence it is true that results are not the object, not the motivation behind our pursuit of God and our walk in the faith. However, as I have said, I will continue to say again that results, among other things, are a system of consolation. Results are proof that you are adhering to spiritual laws. Results are also proof in many regards that God is with you. Not all the time, but many times. Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from god how do we know for no man can do these things so when god is with you there are some things there are some evidences attestations of his presence that must be there and the lord put it in my heart and i know by experience and by the privilege of mentorship from exceptionally successful people in the faith life financially and so on and so forth that there might be a few things we may be missing as believers or other things that we need to inculcate that can transit us to the levels that we seek to have the results that will make us at ease to know and believe that god is faithful are we together so i want to share with us a few things that just take note of it we'll just take three for the sake of time and then we'll pray tonight hallelujah the first belief system that i want us to learn tonight that helps us to be great and helps us to transit well look up please is that all truly great people do not derive their confidence and their self-worth from the things that are outside them please listen all great people do not derive their self-worth from the abundance of the external things that they have. Cars, houses, certificates, achievements, as powerful as all these things are. No truly great man, especially in the kingdom, derives his self-worth from the abundance of these things. That means that when I buy a new shoe, when I buy a new cloth, then I feel more successful when the cloth spoils i feel less successful that's a terrible way to live are we together now the bible um i think that should be i hope is uh what scripture now is it luke chapter 12 it just came to my spirit let's look at it luke chapter 12 i believe it is 
Jesus was teaching Luke chapter 12 yes and verse 15 give it to us please quickly Luke chapter 12 and verse 15 everyone please look up his projected here's what the Bible says Jesus is teaching now and he said unto them take heed and beware of what covetousness greed greed that's the word there greed it says for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of what things which he possesseth. that means the true value of your life and my life is not in cars is not in houses are we together now so you must bring yourself to a point where even though i'm trusting god for a car a house i'm trusting god for um advanced certifications i'm trusting god to go abroad i'm trusting god to increase membership i'm trusting god to have children and so on and so forth my life cannot be and my sense of success cannot be defined by these things you know why because these things vacillate they go up and they go down praise the lord I was sharing i think it was with our school of ministry students yesterday and um it started with the leaders during the leaders meeting um i traveled to one of the states and my phone just fell into mud and water and it was just gone just gone completely and while they were still deciding for me what other phone i would buy to replace that one i decided to take the old phone remember that my old phone that you people hate so much that you've done your best to make sure i throw away you know i dusted the whole thing and i got it back in shape and then when i went for the leaders meeting i could see the body language all the leaders oh not again you could see apostle you've left this you know and all of that and um i used the opportunity to start sharing with them a bit of what i'm sharing with you now imagine that i tied my sense of self-worth to a, an exceptional phone i will now begin to tell myself things that i think you are thinking Ah, that means apostle's finances is going down this one that he replaced this phone maybe he sold it all because he's broke because he's looking for something now remember you are not thinking that it is a make-believe that has come as a result of my tying myself worth to phones there are people who cannot leave their homes until they borrow certain things and wear there are people who cannot because they have created perceptions there are men of God and women of God who cannot be themselves. More than half of their life is not them. It's a dangerous way to live. Listen very carefully. I show you a quick way to suicide. Tie your self-worth to things. And sooner or later you'll find out that you will need a knife, you will need a hoe, a cutlass, or a rope to kill yourself because of disappointed expectations. There are people who have tied their self-worth to the quality and the wealth of the kinds of families they have come from. So they will deny their parents because your mother is somewhere, maybe roasting corn or selling something by the road. And the impression that you have given people is that you are an exceptional Harvard type young man who most likely has spent a major part of his life abroad. And now they need to see your mother or your father. And based on your belief system, you think that looking at her and her state will will be a disadvantage to the perception you are proposing so you will call your mother your auntie say just one of our relatives that just came to stay with us it's, i mean even me i'm surprised now seeing her outside you think what i'm saying is silly except for the fact that it is true how many people will never be proud of even their homes where they live your family house yes i know that they use mud to build it but the mud is not inside your mind but simply because you don't want we have a slang that our generation called this call it falling your hand correct how will i take these people in my department my departmental people want to greet my parents how will i now take them to a house that is smelling the there's humidity even inside the house the carpet i mean everything there are roaches flying around i don't want to be associated with that less the person who wants to marry me who has been perceiving that i'm a lady who was born inside an airplane may now have to make up his mind and change his perception let me advise you 
and let me encourage you i have a responsibility over you listen to me if you tie your self-worth to anything outside you get set for a shock in this life hallelujah god forbid but if any of my vehicles have break down and it's time for me to come for koinonia i would stop a bike outside quickly and say mr man please take me i'm late and and you know members can rob this they'll say my apostle the servant of the living god you know they they will rob it in and make you say bike stop stop let me just go back home tell them i'm not around if you need things to validate who you are you are in trouble because you will never have enough things that's why we seek to change forms listen let your motivation be a sincere desire to transit to a more effective version of yourself not that it is in the acquisition of these things that's why we are disappointed now i bought the phone now i i got the new hair now i got the clothes i got the designers i expected you to notice it and commend me and you ignored me so frustration starts are we together now did you not notice my perfume have you not noticed that i've changed perfume what is my business i'm thinking about my own destiny somewhere did you not notice i changed a car did you not notice i moved to a house have you not noticed that levels have changed i will never tie anything my self-worth to anything no matter how great they are i tell you the truth they are mundane things this teaching may not be popular but it's the way of peace it's not teaching you to be a mediocre it's giving you rest rest you've heard me say it again anything that is what's taking my life on i put it inside me god holy spirit quality information anything that is too big to enter inside me is not worth my attention people's vehicles spoiled and they they were too embarrassed to go to work why because they say ah Ogasi or your car spoiled my self-worth and your self-worth must be a derivative of who you are in christ and what he has done and what you now possess so the first thing i'm advising you and listen to me koinonia i have a responsibility over you and over those who are following the mainstream mindset is to receive an applause because of things you bought a new watch how much is this watch Three hundred thousand. wow you are wearing a three hundred thousand watch that's somebody's salary for one year man you are not a small man no, and you enjoy it foolishly not knowing that that watch can be stolen it it can spoil it can leave you god can instruct you to sew it many things can happen around that watch why will you tie your self-worth and then you find out that you are no longer with the watch and then you are just looking someone may be noticing that i'm not wearing the watch uh, well let me just explain god asked me to, who asked you the, nobody is thinking about you as they are looking at you they are thinking about their problems ah, where will i call my mother now oh god let someone send me 400 naira recharge card and you are there in a make-believe of your own manufacture say i reject bondage shout it i reject bondage ah you used to you used to wear a hair of ten thousand before what happened i noticed you have started wearing the one of one one five and two is everything all right with your finance what is your business does the one five oh not stay oh please I noticed you used to bab every two weeks but in the last one week i'm just a concerned brother it's like a, you is that you don't have money if you don't have money use bab just 
just clean it let it shine let it shine let it shine for god's sake don't be under pressure and say i must do this i must be this if you come to my house and meet me drinking gary i will only put it in a better cup if i honor you but gary you must drink i will not borrow money to buy minerals because of you no listen to me be healed of this societal pressure and let me tell all family people in Kononia, please hear me. Let nobody put pressure on you. Whether a minister, whether a leader, it should not be had in this ministry. That because anybody came to visit, they put pressure on you, you must fry plantain, fry chips. If you have it, praise God. If you don't, even if you don't have anything, put cold water in the fridge and serve. Do not derive self-worth. Don't expect people to treat you unusually just because you bought a new car. Just because you bought a new house. Um, just to let you know that levels have changed. Um, I got a job with NMPC and for starters, they gave me 1.5. And uh, because of that, I want to see Apostle. I don't have the time to join the queue. Can you please fast track the thing? I have a seed and the seed is a sizable one. What do you think I am? That's why it's good for a man of God to be blessed. Because when you are blessed, you are not looking at anybody's envelope and checking the size. No. No, we know man after the flesh. Please listen very carefully. Say in the name of Jesus, my confidence and my self-worth will never be on external things. It will be on who I am in Christ. And what Jesus has done in my life. So be proud of yourself and be proud of your level. If it's only one shoe you have, wear it every Friday. Wear it every Sunday. Let us see it as a testament. So that the day God blesses you, anybody who says it was a mistake, you will not be the one to answer. I'll say I was a witness. I saw that one shoe for two years while he was walking the world. Are we together sisters don't let any brother come to you in the abundance of substance or things just to toy around with your mind and toy around with your life say you know i'm this and that and that my father is a governor of which state what is your surname are the states in nigeria many that we don't know my father is a this my father is a king my mother is a this i'm a prince as you see i'm just a humble one no whether you are a prince or not that's not anybody's business people should honor you because of genuine character that you are a man of character that you are a woman of character is a nobler reason for honor than things number two ready koinonia <laughs> is growing praise the lord You must conquer greed. Write it down. The one cancer behind the, the restraint of God to bless many people. Greed. 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 You know, most people think rich people are the ones who are greedy. I tell you this sincerely. The reason why many poor people, poor Christians especially, who have an advantage of the Holy Spirit. If you have an advantage of the Holy Spirit and he's watching you poor, there's something you are doing to him. He is there as the advantage in your life. Greed. Many believers are greedy. It's shown in their givings. You started giving 10 naira as a student, as offering. And now you are director. You are giving 20 naira. Is that the measure of the lifting of God upon your life? No. Greed. Closely related to greed, please write. Selfishness. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. Please listen very carefully. Jesus Christ is speaking to us. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. What is selfishness? Look at this. 
come doctor selfishness and self-centeredness is when you desire something so bad you do not care what effect it creates on others selfishness is not desiring good things it is desiring good things to the point that you do not care what it does to others that means that i so want to get to this speaker i don't care if i match and i match and i put dr emeka i just want to reach there there are many of us who are like that many nigerians are like that and i'm cautioning you because it's a spirit everywhere it's like nobody cares about the effect of what they are they are wanting to rise causes for others i want to be a ceo i will kill anybody if possible to be that ceo me myself the language of our generation is what is in it for me once there is nothing in it for you it's not your business no it's not the language of great people great leaders the great leaders are selfless people great people are selfless people the bible says looking up to jesus jesus did not come to the earth to pursue an agenda of himself please listen to me i've taught us that it is about us but not all about us when your life becomes all about you then you are in trouble This ministry was founded upon selflessness. Truly, selflessness. Many of you, as you are now, God is helping you, but you want to so grow and rise. There is none of our children here that is going to school because of your school fees. You are waiting till the day you become a millionaire. Some of them, their school fees is 2,000, 3,000, 10,000 you are so engrossed you can package hundred thousand and bring let me lay hands on you to climb the ladder fast but a little child can come and hug you and say uncle i'm not going to school let me die am i your am I your, your father you see that selflessness selflessness the selfishness in our world is so terrible so terrible People will do anything and not mind they will they will hit your car on the road because they want to hurry up break your 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 what they call it your side mirror and just on you and say sorry i see that's the solution to it i'm in a hurry to where how about many of us here you don't care if your siblings rise listen you are not called to carry everybody's load in your life but you are called to at least pay attention to the effect of what your rising is creating you can't ignore everybody and your whole world is about you ladies listen to me because you are the ones that are most hit with this mindset it is always about me my money is for me my everything is for me someone can give you two thousand naira recharge card as a seed you will flash him to call you so you will say thank you what do we call that greed and selfishness listen listen to me many of our parents today many of our parents respectfully speaking and with due honor to our elderly people here many of our parents this is what closed their door they were so willing to succeed that they kicked every destiny helper out and when they got to a place where they needed help there was nobody to help them now when they were in the civil service some of them got to the echelon of their their pursuit they never raised anybody all they were concerned about is me i must sit down and eat and now they've retired no young person can come and say sir in 1995 it was because of you i got a job today i've come with a seed to say thank you let me tell you sincerely speaking many of us here are young people but let me tell you if you are old and nobody sees the need to take care of you and to say thank you it's a sign that you spent your life in selfishness and greed are we together 
last year during my birthday the greatest gift that was given to me was a letter by my little children they write me letters all the time they write all kinds of things but i love their letters and i read every one of it they draw love they write jesus on it they try to draw my face they write you have been a nice daddy thank you those things mean a lot to me than chicken than whatever it is you eat those things and go to the toilet and it's on but those things are a reflection it's a sign that when you are old those ones they can come to you and say make sure this person never cries even in old age you say but it's not your father he said he was better than my father if nobody can remember you for good it's a sign that you are digging the grave already even while you are alive please hear me great people are not great because they are pursuing all they want it's not all about you everything god gives you people should rejoice with you because they know that by the grace of god and with all humility even if it's the crumbs from the table it will reach them I look at us please look at me i can tell you why god has not answered your prayer of financial prosperity he has discerned the extent of greed that in your being blessed nobody nobody many of us are so greedy and selfish that anytime you are blessing somebody they know that you are looking for something whether you are looking for a life partner or you are looking for a destiny helper or you are looking for for something it is not you to give i think if i stop giving it may affect me i may even fall down and die but you know apostle we are not very blessed it's you people that god has helped that is the talk of a greedy person if you can't give clothes there is food one day you can make up your mind to cook two pots of food and call somebody and say i may not do much now but i am breaking the spirit of greed please come and eat in my house they come the next day and say no 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 i was only training myself don't come every day don't be ashamed of saying it because human beings will always take you for granted you do it once and pursue them and don't feel bad tell them please at training I will, when when i get to that realm you will come but for now come and eat are we together say in the name of jesus the spirit of greed the spirit of selfishness i curse it from my life many believers are like that two women or two men can be talking i can be talking with dr emeka and in his presence i will bring out two thousand naira buy egg roll and minerals and hold it while we are talking and finish it and eat the egg roll and squeeze the leather and match it Hapa. it's inhuman to live like that giving is living you must trust god for grace don't wait till you are a millionaire i'm telling you listen this these are belief systems that will make your life exceptional god will never trust a greedy and a selfish person when he sends a word to jacob is because jacob can let that word reach israel if god gives you money can god look at many people in koinonia today and say instead of blessing five people and giving them school fees i know they are coming but can i bless you and then they rejoice the angels rejoice and say these children have gone to school why because one person was blessed what does it take for god to give you a job what does it take for god to turn the economic tide in your life it takes more than studying business let me tell you it takes more than we've taught you a lot and you know that there are astute business people in this place we're not just men of god we're not daft people we're economically sound we're financially sound but i tell you this much more than just the value you give who you are is higher than what you do i had a conversation of recent with a very wealthy man such a rare privilege and i met him 
and I asked him one question I said sir let me ask you one question I said what kind of people will you be looking for at this level and he looked at me and smiled and said apostle you are very smart I said thank you sir my mind was just on the answer and he said should I tell you honesty he said yes and then he kept quiet and took a deep breath he said I will answer you in a story and then he told me a story and at the end of it he said let me test I already told you you're intelligent what kind of people do you think I'll be needing I said trustworthy people he said that's it the morale of the story he gave me was that he would pay any amount to have people who are selfless enough he said every storekeeper and every foreman he employed cheated him and 95 percent of them were christians recommended by pastors he sincerely told me that the non-believers who have handled that branch of his business have been more honest than even the people because of greed 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 let them know that the word is working so you steal everything you steal cement you steal everything and sell it and quietly cover it up do you not know that when truth was buried it came out of the grave hallelujah there are very very listen let me teach you this if you are a businessman here please more than value and productivity look for selfless people when you find selfless people you have not found cheap people you have found priceless people our generation is full of everybody who is looking for everything for myself let me quickly cash in on the moment while i have the time some of you looking at me now as born again as you are let me keep you in a room with plenty money scattered if i count it you will behave because it's counted but let me just scatter it and leave you you will first check whether there's a cctv look around and pray in tongues so that those outside would think there's prayer going on and you just bend as if you are sweeping and carry one and put in your pocket who do you think is watching god alone demons angels the demons that will oppress you and you will shout in the name of jesus <laughs> are you joking please i pray for you in the name of jesus that the grace to be selfless may that grace come upon you yeah. there are nurses that are not selfless is that not so in your hospital there are doctors that are not selfless a woman comes she wants to give birth and they're acting as if please madam if you would die self, just die there whereas that woman has been trusting god for a child for 12 years and you see the greed and the selflessness are you from my tribe are you from my place are you from here no selflessness i these are the things i pray for for myself these are the things that have brought blessings to my life that you show god i told you that the lord told me if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you there are many of you that desire anointing apostle anoint me and i look at you it's not even god even me i know the things you will do if that anointing really comes yeah. you will first run to your enemies and say you are finished you don't know what i'm carrying just know it's over and if you think i'm joking you you will die tomorrow you you will die on thursday by the time you kill people in a row in one week you say what this grace is powerful even me i didn't know it's this powerful listen to my message can god trust you go and listen to it please media let our family online and in diaspora listen to that message can god trust you powerful message many times it is not just in the fasting and the prayer as powerful as it is is positioning yourself god let me be your treasurer on earth the last treasurer betrayed you 
here is a faithful one and god is saying can i trust you say yes trust me god gives you five hundred thousand. your spirit is still sound your head is still sound and he sees how you bless people you say you did this for me let me take it to another level whereas all your prayer from your small mind is god give me five million oh god give me five five million will change my life based on what your mind told you whereas he's thinking of giving you gold as dust and giving you the keys to the hearts of nations lord give me the grace to prophesy as soon as god gives you that grace you just say i found my stream of income i'm not wasting my time for anything again i will never prophesy free i it didn't it was not i got the anointing at a cost and god says you see your heart you were there fasting i warned you and now that you have the anointing and because it is valuable people will now begin to pay hundred thousand per prophecy thirty thousand per prophecy and the truth is that the grace will work and while you are paying and paying you are happy you are building houses collecting people's houses collecting people's cars and doing all of that god is watching you he's watching you because he knows one day you will exhaust that realm so you'll go back again and say lord i'm here he said, it's not me you are talking to it's not me you are talking to i gave you a grace i saw what you did with that grace lord give me the kind of apostles grace and he tests you 20 missed calls by 1 a.m you don't answer any one of them the 21st one you call and say let me tell you something i'm a human being too i sleep i this i that i hate you don't do this to me again the next time you do and god says look at the grace you want listen 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 please look at me selflessness is an unusual virtue that is the reason why not everybody has it why will you reward everybody when they have the same thing dr mike Murdoch says that our similarities create our comfort it's our difference that creates our reward hallelujah how far can you go for the sake of people how far can you go for the sake of god some of you have vehicles you've never carried anybody after service even if it's raining you horn them and say you are going and god is watching and you already say no god i'm trusting you to give me one car that i saw on my way going somewhere and god says you think i'm stupid there are some of you even if it's on a bike or a bicycle you will never help anybody may god never give you anything that you will regret did you hear what i said may god never give you anything that you will say i feel pained that i gave this man this maybe i'll stop here Let me just talk about it the third trait you must embrace is humility i have to talk about it our time is gone but spare me two three five minutes humility humility please look at me the bible says love not the world nor the things that are in this world he says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then it categorizes the things we can love into three the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh number three is called the pride of life there are many people please listen to me you see ba africa hear me now i'm not just talking to zaria i'm not just talking to nigeria i'm talking to africa listen to me because of our background huh and the way we have suffered and the way people have looked down on us and some of us because of our cultural context please listen to me there is that itch to be celebrated there is that itch that urge to be perceived as great and valuable are we together and there's nothing wrong with that we call it spotlight is the slang we have for it some of you i just mentioned spotlight you're already laughing i mean you just imagine yourself there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that 
Pride is one thing that will make God fight a man. God will not fight a man because of sin. God will not fight a man even because of disobedience. But pride. It says that God gives, opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. One of the, one of the, one of the greatest justification for pride is wealth and achievement. Please listen. Wealth and achievement. Every time God warned people of pride, it had to do with wealth and achievement. Deuteronomy chapter 8. You don't have to turn there, just read. The Bible says, let it not be that when you have what? Built houses and done this, done this and that achievement, that you will say, my power and the might of my hand has given me this. And then verse 18 says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he it is he leave the remaining statement it is he he is the focus humility is not refusing what god has done humility is not simplicity humility is acknowledging god as the basis of every achievement that you have outspokenly in your body language and in your conversation god it is unto you apostle joshua selman the great man changing people. Ah, a man can receive nothing, precious people, except it is given to him from God. It's very difficult for some of you to say this thing. Why? Because you feel if I say it, I'm taking away the spotlight from me. Pride. There are many people, there are many parents who would have been lifted, but pride pride they will not be good examples look at me let me tell you why some of you are finding it difficult to access the blessings of god to lift you you are not going to be a good model being blessed you are the best christian model at your current state if you rise higher than that especially financially you will kill people some of you if you rise financially your mother your father your siblings and everybody they will kneel down to greet you every morning simply because you paid rent simply because you paid this i failed in life and people i think i'm a failure but now that i've succeeded i will rub it on the face of everybody no that is the way of the world we are kingdom people can you be blessed and still remain humble can you be blessed and still stoop down to people's levels can you be blessed and not disturb people with noisy of your achievement? <laughs> just to just to meet you and say, ah, um, um, just to let you know, are you aware that I just came back from Lagos and uh, I flew in? You came. That's the most important thing. Whether you crawled, whether you drove, whether you flew, avoid some of those those talks. I was in the plane and ah. You know i was uh, i was i don't know have you ever sat down in a business class because i'm trying to explain something i don't know if you can understand you see let me tell this is why many great people are persecuted in the church because we don't know how to keep quiet success is already loud on itself if you dare rub it in members all and sundry will get back at you and they will find a reason to get back at you let me tell you something it is difficult to criticize a humble man even if you are right humility paralyzes you you what will you now say are we together i'm saying this because we are in a very prophetic season where god is lifting many of us many people are not humble they are only broke by the time the blessings of the lord comes you will see the attitude the pungency of pride pride is one thing that is a destroyer even if you kill satan and all the demons proud people will still die there is nothing that gives me beauty and glory as the world shining the light on me then i hold the light and shine it i'm proud to be the usher shining it to say people 
thank God for Joshua Selman and everything. That's why you notice every time people want to celebrate me for anything, I become uncomfortable. When I'm preaching, I can be bold, I can be this. If I drop this mic now, and you start saying, well, there is a man here, that thing Shade was doing. You see that I felt like dying. If I had my way, I would just send my picture to stand and represent me. But some of you, you like it. As joking as it is, some of you, as you are sitting, you are ah, let my month come. If they give me this opportunity, I will first cut the cake and leave back the knife. Let them snap me alone before everybody comes. The urge, the urge, the urge to outshine. Huh? In, in, a, in a secular business way, that's alright, but in a kingdom way, the, the urge to want to just receive vain glory. Please, you must trust God to conquer it. Conquer it conquer it it's one of the big restraints that many of us may face you know many times i pray for you sincerely i do and i ask the lord i say lord continue to bless and lift my people i'm a, among the many things i get impressions of in my spirit is their tendencies god doesn't directly say pride tendencies vulnerabilities things that can happen that you are not aware of if you ever think money does not have power think again did you hear what i said think again money has power put money in a ring with any boxer it will beat him out before he enters money is powerful anything that can turn a man around without using sword is powerful anything that can relocate a man without advice is powerful money is powerful but when it begins to come with it it will solve other problems and create others hallelujah can you let jesus be seen in your life can you be lifted that 10 million naira just entered your account and you still come for koinonia and just sit down not to say if you push me if you push me if you push me Please, I don't have time for thieves now. What happened? God has blessed me. You're laughing. But these are the things that are enshrined in our hearts. So that they will know I'm a big man. So that they will know I'm rich. Well, for your information, that Jeep you are seeing is my car. For your information, just to let you know that uh, I'll be in UK on Tuesday quickly touch the u.s thursday and i'll try to make coin on you i'm still coming god is watching all those things it's not a testimony you are sharing there are many things that are not testimonies testimonies the goal of testimonies is edification not announcement edification so the part you stress in a testimony is the edification truly let me tell you something i vowed a vow to god and I say, Lord, whatever you will give me that will make me proud, I'm praying in advance, no matter how I cry, don't answer me. Don't answer me. Humility is a powerful thing. Can you have access and still be humble? Can you have increase and still stay humble? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't say we are like that in our family. It means all of you need to hear this message. It doesn't mean you are right just because everybody is like that. We are like that. If we have it, we show it. If we don't have it, we don't show it. But it ought not to be so. Jesus is teaching. When you come into the kingdom, you don't come with the baggages of your belief. You drop it aside and adopt the value system of the kingdom. There is nothing as powerful has been blessed and been humble your life is a message in action in action and it's amazing that many people what you call wealth is not wealth it's just a test 1.5 and people are in trouble 1.5 entered my account I have 1.5 million. Oh, well, now it, it has gone back to 1.4. I use 100,000. And while you are talking, you may believe you are impressing everybody. Whereas scattered among you, there are accounts that if you see, you will not wake up again. You will not wake up 
I'm telling you, it's not the you. There are some things you act like you are used to seeing. No, there are things you are not used to seeing. You will see things that you will not know what part of your body to react with. And yet, people can have those things and be quiet. Moses had the ability to prophesy from morning till night. The grace of the prophetic was so much in him. Yet, Moses was quiet. Part of his spirit was taken out. They called elders who had followed him. 70 people received the spirit of Moses. Nobody could keep quiet. Ah, I thus hear the Lord from morning till night. And Moses was watching them. Moses said, this thing that is making you make noise, times 10 of it is what was in me, yet I was quiet. Can you have so much and be quiet? Can you know so much and be quiet? There are people, if you know so much, when someone is talking once is wrong, let me correct you, sorry. That's what I studied. No, no, that's my field. I won't keep quiet. It is powerful to know so much. There are times that I listen to people as they talk. And many times what they are saying doesn't make a lot of sense. Spiritually and even intellectually. I know a lot more than what they are saying. But I honor them because they have more results than me. I keep quiet and I just hear. You understand what I'm saying? I say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what the man is saying is, is, is quite honestly nonsense. And I just keep quiet and I listen. He say, ah. And sometimes they are, they are flattered. They are impressed because of the whole thing. Just listen and say, yes, sir. And keep quiet. Not, sir. With all due respect, I don't want to talk quiet. We're just keeping quiet. But, Sakai, this your thing is outdated. No. You lose many opportunities like that. In the name of Jesus, may this ministry even with the things that god is doing bring people who are exceptionally blessed and humbled that a time will come when people will pack cars that if you want to see it you only come for koinonia and you will not even know who is who people will just be rolling rolling on the ground it's after the grace you will just see a tiny lady say let me rush home you think she's calling a bike man and she will enter a car that was your dream that you plan to buy in 30 years and you say that's the owner i said that's the owner that lady is a ceo of something he said was she not the one rolling up and down that's a message koinonia extended extended through your life don't brag around and move around making noise i have this i have that listen when you are under pressure to keep saying things it's a sign that you have complex yourself you must be healed be strengthened when god blesses you you cannot hide light we are going to pray our time is up but we must take two or three minutes to pray more than having things these are the things you must become and your life becomes exceptional lord take away my tendencies take away my vulnerabilities take away the things that can happen to me when i rise to certain levels I desire you to take me to certain levels of blessings but Lord I know that there are things that are enshrined within my heart that will will limit your workings in my life if someone praying tonight lift your voice and pray tonight's teaching may be a hard teaching but pray is a maker of great people pray I owe everything to you, O oh God. All that I am and all that I will ever become, let it be unto you. Let the name of Jesus alone be glorified. Alone be glorified. When men see me, may they see you. May men not look at me and forget about you. May men not look at my results and ignore Jesus. That when men see my life, it will remind them of who God is. Is someone praying tonight? Hallelujah. The last prayer point because of our time. Please, I want you to pray this with all your heart pray and say lord don't restrain your hand from me i am trustworthy 
you can trust me with the wealth of the kingdom you can trust me with access you can trust me with influence i will not bring your name i will not bring reproach to your name through the pungency of pride that will come out i will let men know no matter how you lift me i will let men know that jesus is the reason for who and what i am unashamedly consistently intentionally but lord do not withhold your hand of blessings in this season you are lifting men lift me do not withhold new wines from coming upon my life pray for yourself pray for koinonia let it please you oh god to trust me with everything you are pouring in this season wisdom grace lifting anointings access everything i receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord in one minute please hold the hands of somebody close to you we are going to pray for koinonia as a ministry lord as you lift us you are giving us a voice across this nation you are giving us a voice many of you have seen the mighty things that god is doing in and through this ministry god has made our song a praise to the nations and god has so exalted himself i like you to pray pray and say lord as you lift us we declare that never will there come a time in this ministry where men will see your workings and forget about jesus lift your voice you love this ministry pray pray online continue the lifting oh god let the teachings continue to transform men let it enter the hands of people we declare it's a vow and a covenant that jesus and him alone will be glorified as you announce us as you lift us as you honor us in the name of jesus we decree and declare pray for everyone connected to this ministry pray for every business pray for every career pray for every achievement and every achiever pray for every business person pray for every ministry connected to this ministry pray for our children father we declare that in this season that you are announcing and lifting men jesus alone will be glorified hallelujah i pray for you that the things that i share tonight will mean a lot to you if it is lifting in the kingdom you truly desire please when these messages are uploaded get them again and sit down don't say they are simple these are the weightier matters of the kingdom you settle down and listen and pray personally this prayer point you should go back to your secret place and develop it and cry and say lord help me i have defaulted in this area and that area it may be why you're outstretched and you started but something restrained your hand now i know it's not just demons let the heavens be open pour out increase pour out influence i told god as far as my life is concerned please don't have any fear blessing me don't have any restraint blessing me because for as long as i'm alive breathing i will ensure that in and through my life that jesus is glorified you must adopt that you come from families that like to know who is doing what so that you earn respect you must kill that spirit don't say i'm yoruba don't say i'm Igbo. don't say i'm south south don't say i'm hausa don't say i'm middle belt throw away those things and say i'm a citizen of the kingdom and i must subscribe to the way that kingdom people behave they say this is what you should do but i say this is jesus teaching they say this is what you should do but i say this is the way father i stand representing this ministry and representing the things that you are doing even in this nation and around the world i know that in this season you are truly looking for men you can trust and lord you have put it in my heart as a burden to teach your people 
the spiritual traits that we must inculcate that position us to be lifted in our places of work in ministry in business in career and even in destiny i have shared some of these truths with your people and i cry by the god of heaven that you will cause this word to be effectual in our hearts whatever it is that our lives have projected that have made you restrain your hand of blessing your hand of lifting your hand of honor we pray tonight by the mercies of the god of heaven let your hand be outstretched once again to lift to bless to anoint and to take us to realms unimagined in the name of jesus i pray specifically over the issue of finances we're in a season where so many people need the hand of god in this area i've told you it's a cost to chase money look for money it will distract you and take away useful time from your life i pray that any of these things that you have assumed in your heart that will make god to restrain his hand to bless you or bless your family by the mercies of the god of heaven may mercy be shown you this night in the name of jesus and i pray for you sincerely and truthfully may you step into blessings and into realms you never even imagined you will step into may you step into anointings may you step into access may you step into honor may you step into influence may you step into open doors in the name of jesus christ i declare may kings entreat your favor in the name of jesus that even the blessed will call you blessed the anointed will call you anointed in the name of jesus christ everything that represents shame and reproach in your life and in your family i stand right now in the name of jesus and i declare that it leaves your life like smoke before the wind whatever god has given you that is becoming a cause in your life right now i interject with the mercy of god and i pray that nothing god has given you will be to your heart nothing god has given you will be to the heart of those around you when god is finding people to lift in this season may he find you when god is finding people looking for people to honor may he find you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen give jesus praise hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you